please start the preview stream. Oh, Bob does this differently. I gotta go there. Um, yep, Globuster's thumb. That's gonna be up there. Okay, I think we're good. So we should be ready to go. Okay. All right, and we're gonna start the intro in three, two, one. Please start the preview stream. Oh, Bob. Start the preview stream. Oh, Bob does this differently. Go there. Mm, yep, Globuster's thumb. That's going to be up there. Okay, I think we're good. So we should be ready to go. Okay. All right, and we're going to start the intro in three, two, And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another Globusters, Apollo 11, and other fantasies. I am your host, uh, and you can tell that by the audio issues we had at the beginning. Uh, I'm your host, Jaron from Jaronism. Uh, and whenever I host Globusters, there's always some issue. We just had a live show. I tried to uh, double over real quick, change accounts, and get on the Globusters channel, and we had uh, echoing issues at the beginning. Uh, and I also started it too early, and you got to hear everything I said as I prepped for the show. So sorry about that, but that's the way it goes. The show is on. We're now running just fine, I believe. Let's make sure we've got everybody with us. Uh, John the Morgau first. Are you there? I am here. How's it going? Very good. Glad you're uh, joining us today. Appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, it should be a fun show. Probably keep it a little bit short. We'll talk about that here shortly. And also we have joining us Iru Landucci, the great and wonderful uh, from Argentina. Iru, are you joining us? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, a nice topic. One of my favorite topics, uh, Apollo 11. Yeah. Apollo 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. No? Oh, all the wonderful f space frauds and, and yes. moon landings. Yeah. And Mercury and, and Gemini and every Apollo, you know, you know, every space mission out there is my favorite topic. Absolutely. Yeah, me too, because uh, it's obviously an observably fake. <laughs> it's another yes. obviously an observably yes. F word, but... Uh, no, yeah, so uh, it's a good topic, and uh, everybody, I'm glad we don't have any echoing, and everything seems to be running accurately, so that's good. Uh, did want to say hello also to uh, Dave Weiss, is listening on the beach right now, he said, and he is with uh, Aaron Ra, no, Aaron Ra, <laughs> Aaron Rainin, uh, the guy who uh, did the, he has the website moonhoax.com, and also did the great documentary, uh, Did We Go? So they're hanging out and talking about how great I am and how accurate I was in my uh, assessment of his interview with us but uh no he's also redone that uh website so everybody should check out moonhoax.com he's uh, done that for the 50th anniversary re-updated that and if you haven't seen the video yet uh, did we go please watch it again it's um you know aaron Rainin who was paid uh some sixty thousand dollars from the state of ohio to prove that we went to the moon and by the end of his documentary film he leaves it up to you to decide but um 
you know, clearly to me, uh, it was definitely short on evidence. So uh, that's a thing you should definitely check out. Have either one of you seen the Apollo 11 documentary yet? No, no. not yet. No, yet. Uh, I but reckon... how, how how much cost that? Seventy nine? No, a, a dollar, like uh, maybe two dollars. Ah, a dollar. Yeah, $2. to rent the DVD. Too much, too much. Too much for you? <laughs> I'll, send, yeah. I'll send you $2 <laughs> to your PayPal after you receive it. Okay, please. please. <laughs> so you can check that out. Um, yeah, let me actually show you just a little bit of it, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit about that. But uh, also, we should be having Bob possibly uh, joining us, uh, maybe for just a short segment. He's actually in Denver right now. They're doing the Force the Level uh, FE Core Observation Experiment Test, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was hosting the um, live feed yesterday, and uh, I'll be hosting it, hosting it again today. That is for FE Core members, so uh, not everybody can see that. That will all be released eventually on a video, um, but right now they're just doing a live stream for members and people who bought tickets to watch that. It's uh, pretty good. So far they've had three cameras running, and we've had Thomas Scott kind of leading us through exactly what's going on. we got Chris Van Maitre out there. Uh, doing the test and, and kind of walking through, basically just measuring rods from uh, 40 meters at a time, and then they're going to stretch that out to an entire two miles uh, to basically tell whether the first rod and the second rod have any deviation from the level. Uh, and that's all being done with a you know all the survey equipment that are needed and actual real. This is not just uh, you know some generic experiment or test or observation. This is actually done with the equipment that needs to be. Uh, used for that so let me take you over here real quick uh, let's see here that's not the right one let's go to here there we go all right so this is the video i'm not going to actually play it at all uh, simply because i don't want to get any copyright strikes but i do want to show you a few things uh, basically we can tell it's real because it's uh, made by cnn films so i thought you were going to say because it looks so fake <laughs> <laughs> well, when you get into this film, uh, there's a lot of interesting things about it. One of the things, uh, you can see this picture here. Uh, somebody, ac according to uh, the, there's like a bonus feature on the DVD. Somebody found, and I don't want to get this wrong, I want to say it's 65 millimeter film uh, that had never been seen before. But look at the quality of this film. Um, and, you know, they're showing the actual Apollo 11 launch. Um, you can just see the quality of the film is absolutely unbelievable. So it's, it's amazing when you think about the quality of film that we get from the moon. Remember, this is the same time. This, is, this video here that we're watching is from before. Like, look at the video of them uh, heading out to the um, little car. It's amazing footage. Um, and you get to see you know, actual people there watching. Uh, you get to yeah, see... Yeah, maybe, maybe it's a little restore. Right. You know. Well, if you look like at it, that, I mean, this is this is really sharp. Yeah, it could be restored, but eventually, when you see them, uh, this all looks nice and beautiful, and everything looks great uh, until they launch off and they get to this kind of footage, and it just. But I mean, look at the the imagery here. I mean, yeah, that could be restored, but it certainly looks fantastic. And again, it tells you why we don't have any footage from the moon, and exactly. and, and people yeah. fail to realize that uh, the moon footage that we got. The reason people are saying, "Well, we're missing the tapes," I heard Bill Nye one time say. Oh, if we're missing the tapes, then what are we watching when we're watching Apollo 11 footage if we're missing the tapes? It's like, no, we're missing the actual footage like this is. What they gave you was they had somebody with a camera who stood in front of a basically black and white TV monitor and filmed the moon landings from that TV monitor. Uh, it's just ridiculous. When they have this kind of uh, technology, why wouldn't they take a camera that could produce this kind of thing to the moon? So once you see the, the film and you realize that this, all, this part, the beginning, is all beautiful. You know, it's really pretty, and you're like, wow, this is really pretty. And then they get up into space, and everything just turns into CGI. They have little drawings of what was going on, uh, where the moon was, where the lander was. Um, this part of the footage is, you know, you can, I don't think anybody could say anything other than how beautiful it was. Look at all these people watching. Uh, beautiful footage. Uh, definitely check out the uh, documentary, though. It's certainly interesting that once they get up into space, uh, it's all the same footage you've seen before, and it just really shows how terrible it is. So... Just wanted to bring that up a, a, a little bit and let people uh, decide for themselves what they think of that documentary. And, of course, it is the 50-year anniversary uh, this year. And so I know Globusters will be doing a 50-year anniversary special. Uh, I've got a movie coming out that I'm going to be doing um, coming out around that same time, somewhere be between July 16th and July 20th. Um, but I thought maybe today we could talk a lot about uh, the moon landings and our issues with it. I'll just kind of bring up some... Uh, topics and and maybe you guys can 
uh, comment on that. As far as other things in the news, I don't know if you guys saw this as well. Let me bring this over. Uh, did you guys see this beautiful image, which uh, proves that the uh, yes, yes, yes. The, yeah, uh, I can see even the debris and all the. I know, you know. I see a broken pieces. Piece. Yeah, I can see a piece over here. <laughs> broken piece over here. Spaceship. Yeah, this is proof that the uh, NASA publishes photo of Israeli spacecraft lunar crash site. So I just don't know how we can argue this anymore after this image came back. But what 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 happened with the spacecraft? I mean, disappear completely. Right. They say it's, that they they think it must it, have just crashed, and then NASA brought back this picture, which proves it. So. I mean, to me, it's proven, man. This thing like, crashed on wow. the moon. <laughs> and uh, start firing, you know, uh, because this... there is no air, there is no atmosphere. So what, I, I mean, know what happens, th there was an explosion or just rip apart. It know? says uh, here, minutes before the craft was due to land, its main, main engine shut down and communication with the spacecraft was lost. The engine later restarted and communication was restored, but too late to arrest the craft's velocity, which was too fast for a safe landing on the lunar surface. Communication was then lost for good with the working assumption being that the craft was destroyed on impact. Uh, that has now been confirmed <laughs> by NASA photographs. <laughs> so it's been but confirmed. The best, the best part, uh, we, we never uh, have a video. Of course not. No, even this, and I don't know if it's just my computer or something, but I tried pressing this. It's like supposed to be a GIF, but I can never get it to work. See, it just like flashed and did nothing. I don't know. Maybe other people's computers. There has been some videos before that for some reason I can't play. Uh, this is supposed to be a GIF. I even went to the Twitter account and found it. And, uh, man, mm -hmm. you want to see a bullshit account, go to Twitter and check out the NASA account and go through all their tweets. It's just nonsense after nonsense after fantasy after fantasy. Um, another thing I saw this morning that I thought was really, really good. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do a video about it just because it was so good. Uh, was Owen Benjamin started his, his stream today, and he's wearing a lab coat with a NASA button on it. And he goes through the reading of the Big Bang on Wikipedia. And, man, it's just hilarious. He's just going through and just pointing out the absurdities and all the verbiage that they use when they say, you know, it apparently sometimes could, you know, all these little words that uh, tell you that they're just making it up. Um, so, anyway, that should be uh, interesting. If you want to watch that, that's from Owen Benjamin's stream today. Uh, do I remember the name of it? It was called uh, The Music of Authority. And, uh, yeah, you'll see, I think the thumbnail might have, oh, no, it's just him playing the piano. But he's sitting in front of his piano with his <laughs> his lab coat and his NASA button, which is uh, quite hilarious. So that was good to see. Um, also, I did have, uh, I was looking at the NASA live stream from the ISS earlier. And uh, this is just hilarious, man. Th these are what, these are the proofs that we have space travel. Look at this thing. There we go. Black screens. Nothing going on. I mean, Iru, where, how easy is this for them to fake? Uh, oof, for $2, I can make it pretty quickly. <laughs> right. If you put $4, maybe in real time. <laughs> I'll make it 6 so you can get the Apollo uh, but 11 the, DVD. You know, the, 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 the comp okay, okay. So the complete okay. problem with all this uh, footage from outer space is that we never saw, you know, stars or... or Right. other options in the space so it's so easy to fake because you have just a black background right. this could be miniature this could be another uh iss in the warehouse or whatever i mean this is not any proof that they are out there because you don't have any real reference to compare and no. for me it's completely uh nonsense that in 2019 uh we don't have as a camera set up uh especially to see stars in, in the space. Right. No, it's just ridiculous. You know, I mean... And they always want to say, oh, it's exposure. It's like, yeah, you can set the exposure okay, to but see stars. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can put three cameras. In fact, I I'm, I believe it was like two months ago, I show on Globebuster, show um, this uh, Katy, I can't remember the surname of the astronaut, saying that in the ISS we have a telescope and we can see black holes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember that, but I, I don't remember. But Katie I think you're Coleman. Katie, Katie Bowman. Coleman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, and, if you look then, at all these, you know, little, all these little videos, and, and they just show nothing. Uh, I, I literally should do a live stream where I go out and set my iPhone camera up and just watch grass grow, and and expect and say, here, people, can I get fifty-six million dollars a day? Because look at this amazing footage of grass grow. I mean, that's what you see here. Look at this. Is is this is proof to anybody of anything? 
I mean, this thing just sits there, and I'm skipping ahead hours at a time. You know, this is another hour forward. And, of course, you get the blue stream every 90 minutes or so when they cut out because they're on the dark side of the Earth, which makes a lot of sense with the uh, belief in, in satellites and everything else that you would have to cut out the video. Uh, it just makes me laugh, man. This stuff. Right. Like, what's disgusting. what's the point of all those thousands of satellites up there if you can't even get a constant feed from the frickin' ISS? I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, you can't even get a constant feed. It turns blue every once in a while, and, and you just get this view. It's the same thing as if I went and put a camera in the engine of my car and said, I'm going to live stream my drive to so-and-so's house or whatever, but I'm just showing you the engine components. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what is this crap? Uh, it's such nonsense, but people buy it up and they keep handing NASA more and more money. And uh, I think that's the worst thing about everything that NASA does is the uh, the continued story. And one of the things that I've told people that they can do before um, is type into you know Google search, uh, going back to the moon, NASA returns to the moon. But go to tools and then change the date selection uh, to 1990 to 92. And then you'll get all these articles that talk about NASA returning to the moon and they're going to do it in five years and they're going to stay and we're going to build a colony and then change the date from 92 to 94 and search again. And it's all new articles about new thing. Now we're going to be going in 10 years and make sure you do this and do that. And uh, we're going to go there and it's going to build a colony and we need people that are going to go there and we're working on the, the moon suits. And then you change the date from 94 to 96. And again, it's the same thing. And if you yeah. change it from 96 it's, to 98. Is it 96? It's a nice exercise, and here in Argentina, we have a, a singer uh, who composed a song which have a part saying that, I see the future, repeat the past. And right. it's exactly what has happened. Yeah, so at what point are people going to wake up to it? I don't know if they ever will. And the latest thing is you have um, Trump basically saying that uh, he wants NASA to go back to the moon by 2024. You've got Pence who comes along and says... Oh, we're going to get back there by uh, 2024. If we don't, then it's not time to change the mission. It's time to uh, change the organization. But here's what everybody fails to realize. It's it's pretty obvious to me, and I could be wrong about this, of course, but it's pretty obvious that Trump will win the election in 2020. So the election after that in 2024 uh, will be right in time for there to be a whole new administration, and they'll come in and they'll just do exactly what Obama did. Obama came in and said, oh, no, no use in going to the moon. We've been there and done that. Change your focus to go to Mars. So they change their focus. They try and tell everybody they're going to go to Mars until Trump comes, Trump and Pence comes, and they say, no, we want to go back to the moon. They set the date at 2024, which is exactly when there'll be a new president. The new president will come in and say, nope, we're going to go back to Mars, and then they will work on, and it's just, it'll never end. They'll never go, and and people don't realize it. I don't know what else to, to say about it, and how do you prove it to people? It's just like when we said that there wouldn't be that flight around the world. Everyone said, yeah, right, you know, they're going to have this flight. It's going to go pole to pole. It's the pole to pole flight, and we all said it's impossible. It won't happen, and what happened? It turned out to be a hoax. So, you know, that's uh, that's that. So, yeah, do that do a little you know exercise if you want to change the date tool on, on Google, and just you'll see that they just keep perpetuating this lie going on and on and on and forward. So you got $56 million a day. And I've said it a million times um, that, you know, if I gave Iru $56 million once, imagine what would be expected of him. If I said, here, here's $56 million. Show me what you can do with it. All the things that would be expected of him. Yet NASA gets that every single day. And with with nothing. 56 million, I, I go to live in Iceland. I buy in Iceland and goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you <laughs> well, th then then we wouldn't give it to you the second day. But uh, well, okay, NASA okay, does the okay. same thing, right? They they go up and they uh, obviously have all that land up in uh, you know Devon Island where they can drive their little uh, rover around and take pictures and tell everybody it's from Mars and it's a Mars landscape. It just makes no sense. Look where they're spending that money. Why wouldn't you just if you own land, I would just build a backyard and call it the you know the Mars yard. I think they have something like that. But instead, they send everybody to Devon Island and they have people up there and they've got uh, an encampment up there and tents and, and, and satellite equipment. What is that for other than to fake space? I don't know. No, it's amazing. These guys are completely brainwashed the humanity uh, <laughs> because, you know, it's like you say, 50, $56 million and you cannot put a, a camera special to see stars in outer space. Yeah, way way too difficult. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. And <laughs> hey, you mentioned that Devon Island thing, Jaron. I had a question when when you found that. 
Um, were you just like perusing through Google Earth and looking at the different, uh, you know, Street View cameras or whatever and just happened upon that on the live stream that you were doing? Or like you had found it earlier and then like, oh, my God, like, we got to live stream this. I, yeah, no, I, I found it. Sure. I'd found it that day. And the way that you can do it, and uh, I don't know if I could bring it up right now, but uh, if you go to. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was. I enjoyed that myself. Uh, if you go to Google Earth, there's a you know left hand column where you can make little check boxes. Um, I might bring it up here just to show you if I can bring this in one second. Let's see if it comes up. Um, but you can go to the little check boxes on the left and you can put like show roads, don't show roads, show photographs, don't show photographs, things like that. And there is one if you kind of, you know, there's like an expanding menu. Uh, let me see if it will show. Sometimes I think I've got my thing set so that it won't show that side. Let me see what it looks like here. Google Earth. And yeah, let me see if I can move this screen over real quick. So if I move this over, there we go. Okay, so over here, let me transfer this. All right, so we're just looking at Google Earth here real quick. Get off there. Get off there. And over here, there's li different little buttons. So you got borders and labels, places. Well, in f one of these, and I don't remember which one it is, uh, somewhere there's NASA. Is uh, Maybe it's in gallery. Yeah, right here. So you can see there's like NASA. You can check that. And then basically, I just unchecked everything else. So it would be the equivalent of going nothing and then down here and checking NASA. And then, uh, then if you get close, it has to see all these little NASA places, uh, NASA things. And then I also checked, uh, so here's Earth City Lights, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I was just playing with this, and somehow I got up here by Devon Island, and I don't even know if it will show up anymore. But uh, basically I was in oh, here. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they got rid of that crap by now. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. But I was just in here, and when I got real close at some point, a little NASA thing showed up. I was like, oh, what's that? And then, you know, click that and then saw these images. And it was basically like two or three in that area. And I don't remember Devon Island was somewhere up in this region. But uh, uh, I think I also had set images, uh, maybe somewhere in here, one of these images tabs um, were photos. And they have uh, so maybe have photos checked. I don't remember. It was playing with these little things. And it just popped up that uh, there was some images there. So kind of like these. You know, they're showing little images here. And I happened to find one that was like right next to a NASA thing. So I just clicked this image mm -hmm. and then before you know it, found uh, NASA camping out up there. Um, I probably won't be able to find it now. But uh, like I said, I'm sure it's gone. Um, but again, it was just like playing with things like that down here. And it just happened to be that there was an image next to a NASA. And I think it was one of these 360 images, really. One of these little... Uh, 360. Like panoramic type yeah, things. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. which exactly one it was called, but there's lots of these things. So people can just play with those and see what they find. Um, but that was basically all it was. And then I saw uh, maybe these gigapixel photos. I don't remember. Or gigapan. Maybe gigapan. I don't know. One of these. And anyway, I just yeah found that. And I remember calling Bob. Like, Bob, you'll never believe what I found. So something like this. So I went down here and clicked one of these and then clicked into one of these images and sure enough, they were, and you can tell this looks exactly like NASA. But there it is. <laughs> oh, wow. I just got lucky as could be. Still yeah. there. So, you know, that, it was just like this. And it was finding this. And then when I rotate it around, let me see if we can do it again. Um, th so there's other pictures here. Let me get out of this again. Exit photo. I guess I didn't get rid of it. And it's, it's, too, it's, it's so easy to, you know, put a red filter and say we are on Mars. Just with that there landscape. So then I zoomed in here and found that this was some camping thing here. And I said, okay, what is this place? And then sure enough, there's going to be a van here. Here you go. And this truck says NASA. And it says on here, I think uh, before it was clear to see, you could see it said something Mars Project. Something like right here, it says Mars Project maybe. I thought that the picture was uh, easier to see here than it is and now. And nice, nice orange color for the truck. Right. If you know a little bit of geometry, you know. Move this back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me move this back so you can see a little bit what I'm doing. So that's all it was. It was just that. And then I saw all these, you know, that they're out there with these encampments and, and they're obviously sending people up there. Um, yeah, but right now it's kind of hard to see, but I did say something, maybe it's right here, Mars project. Uh, maybe I looked up a image. I think in that video, it actually, you can see me zoom in and you can actually read it say, and they've got all these. Yeah, satellites I think it was on one of those four wheelers or one of those trucks or something. Right. And, uh, you know, so it's just crazy, and this is exactly what the terrain looks like on Mars. You can see there's obviously no plants, there's no uh, you know, shrub uh, around here. It's just these rocks, and it's exactly what Mars looks like, at least that they tell us. 
So certainly yeah. funny, and, and that's basically how I found it. So I'm sure that there's other things like this, um, and I don't even know how I found this location, but it was just exactly like this, putting on that. Um, so maybe it wasn't selecting NASA. Maybe it was more selecting an image, um, and then you can see that that's the only images in this area. And then there is some here um, and here, but uh, it was those specific. But this is exactly what they show us. Oops, what did I do here? I think probably people are looking at the other thing. Um, so anyway, yeah, you can have fun with that and look at it if you want later. I'm sure you can find some stuff. Um, but yeah, that was basically how I found it there. This is some image that I just pulled up that uh, people can't see me doing right now, can they? Nope. Let's go back to here. So yeah, this is one of the images that I just clicked. Uh, but anyway, it would be very easy to just throw a layer over this. You make this ground a little bit more red. You make the sky harder to see and you cut the vi image here and then you just call that Mars and so yeah that's when I made that video about that so certainly interesting there um, let's see here let's go uh, back yeah and, and for NASA it's also very easy because for example the Mars rover send us a picture individual pictures and, and supposedly one picture every I don't know how many hours with difference uh, you know they, they never send a, a video or something more you know complicated to, to not to fake because in our days our technology allow us to fake everything so but we don't have real time nothing like that so they um, can do what's, whatever they want what's so messed up is they did uh, a few years back the like a documentary about the curiosity rover and, and the other one whatever it's called and um it was 100 percent cgi there weren't any, uh, they didn't even claim to have any real images or real videos for that documentary. And it, it was an hour long thing about these uh, little rovers that are supposedly on Mars that have cameras and, uh, and everything. And yet, for some reason, they, they can't give us real pictures or real videos uh, from, from those rovers, which is like, so what's the purpose of sending them up there with cameras if you're just going to give us CGI renderings of the damn thing? It's like, it's, it's so ridiculous. Especially in today's day, when, when we know how cheap it is to get 4K camera in a little my my GoPro Hero 5, which you know wasn't much more than two or three hundred bucks, is a little square. It's like as big as you know uh, I don't know. It's definitely two inches by two inches, maybe square, and uh, it delivers 4K footage. And and so it's so cheap. And when you know how much money these guys have, and then what do you get from all the Globers? They always say the exact same thing. Well, you know NASA's job isn't pr to prove things to you and show you video. It's like, well, what are you talking about? Who pays for their salaries? Who pays for all that equipment? Pretty sure it's me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and me. <laughs> just not Eru. Not Eru. No. Nope. <laughs> Congratulations, Eru. I'd be proud of that if I were you. Um, the, I mean, the other thing, I, and again, we're talking a lot about uh, Apollo 11 because of the 50th anniversary. And uh, also, I did an interview with uh, Mel Fabregas on. Uh, Veritas Radio that uh, we just went deep into the moon. So I've got a lot of that in my head, uh, you know, talking about the whole fact the you know, SpaceX landing these rockets now that we see them send a rocket 50 miles in the air and, and re-land it on Earth and just how ridiculous that is and how it, uh, if anything, proves that the moon landings never happened because you're supposed to believe that we should be getting excited about that now or Blue Origin sending one, you know, 50 miles in the air and then having it return when there's no people inside of it. And it's landing on Earth where we can practice things and we can uh, perfect things. But you're supposed to believe that 50 years ago that they put people in that craft, launched it not just 100 miles into the air, but 239,000 miles in the air. And then that craft landed on the moon. Uh, those guys got out and played golf and drove around and did all that fun stuff. And then got back in the craft without even worrying about, well, this, you know, this is dangerous. We're about to take off from a foreign body that we've never done before. They press a little button, the thing lifts off and somehow connects with the orbiting craft and then comes and, back to Earth. And let me, let me tell you something. Not just uh, uh, they, they, you know, six times, they, they did it six times perfectly, but in the Apollo 11, there is a history about that supposedly uh, Buzz Aldrin um, used his uh, a Parker pen right. to switch to switch a button to open the door or, or seal the door or something like that. I don't know if you read it. It's, yeah. it's like a, he put yeah, a little, you read it. He put a pen cap in the circuit breaker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, because it so was broken. That's, it's, no, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, and you know, you 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 mentioned um, they took off 
from the moon in this thing that they had never tested before. Right. That like the like the test that they had done landing the thing on Earth, they I think they all failed and the thing like blew up. But uh, taking off in this thing that is has never been tested before like it doesn't make any sense the military you know nasa would would never do that and they certainly wouldn't live stream it you know what i mean they, they like if they're testing this thing for the first time taking off from the moon they, they they wouldn't live stream it they wouldn't have live video feed coming from that i'm sorry no but they yeah did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, for example, no, and even maybe you know, in in the military background, you're never gonna transmit live because everything could be, you know, uh, r be wrong. Right. So, for example, the the Russians' uh, space program, the supposedly when this uh, Gadabi, I, I can't remember the name, I never pronounce it well. The the first man who supposedly go in orbit, uh, they don't transmit live or nothing like that. Uh, they uh, wait like two or three days to release the public uh, to the public the uh, supposedly, you know, uh, Yuri Garagagi <laughs> orbit. Yuri, Yuri uh, Garin, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they never go live. Uh, at least you have everything planning and everything. And, and in fact, we don't even know if the Apollo missions uh, were live. Because they pre-record everything and they just transmit live, but it doesn't mean that it's real live footage. No, no, not at all. And again, they not at all. They, they have everything post-productive and absolutely. And that's why you would have uh, you wouldn't have the tapes available now. And again, you know, we talked a big amount about that. That this this is not just like one or two tapes. You might be able to understand. That, oh, well, those one or two tapes got uh, you know went missing, but it was. Uh, 700 boxes of 13,000 reels of tape is supposedly just missing, that they taped over it or it's gone, nobody knows where it is. And again, you can go to moonhoax.com to get the uh, video Did We Go where you know uh, Aaron Rainin goes and actually speaks to the people at NASA and asks Gene Krantz and these other people, hey, do you have any idea where this stuff is? And they say, no, I've never seen it. It's not in existence anymore. Um, it's just crazy. And then to think... That remember, they have one feed going to one black and white TV monitor, and nobody knows where that feed is coming from. And then you've got a cameraman who's standing there filming it and saying, this is live footage. Are you kidding me? And like you said, uh, Iru, they would never have filmed it live. They actually gave people uh, the day off of work. Um, they actually gave children the day off of school. And then in the newspapers at the time was a schedule. At this time, they'll be stepping out. At this time, they'll be talking to the president. At this time, they'll be setting the flag. At this time, which is just ridiculous because, you know, what they, you have to think about the pride that was sold on America, the American pride. And to think that they would have everyone sitting in front of their TV, they're about to beat the Russians, you know, the Russians, they're about to beat the, you know, the enemy and, and beat the space race. And then these guys get out and die on the moon. It would have been the biggest national travesty of all time. Uh, they weren't going to have that happen. So what did they do? They they filmed for you a movie and then had it played to one CRT monitor in black and white and then had somebody film it and called it live. So. Yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, to um, this guy, uh, Yuri Gagarin, mm -hmm. uh, two months later, uh, two months or three months later that this, you know, supposedly out of orbit experience, uh, he died. Uh, in a really strange accident, a flight accident, a plane accident, in fact, because he was going in a plane, in a military plane, uh, a low altitude, and suddenly uh, a jet plane crossed over uh, his head, uh, a really low altitude. So the, the jet uh, on the top uh, uh, produced uh, a huge turbulence in the air, and the plane of the cosmonaut crashed on the earth. So... You, you have all these things, you know, and with Americans, astronaut, they never go public again. You know, you have the, the uh, Neil Armstrong never give uh, a public conference all the time trying to, you know, hide from the controversy of uh, the, the moon landing. So it's everything is uh, all the time. It's just like uh, there is something strange in the air. You know, they are not proud of what they did. 
No, and you guys need to check out this video if you haven't seen it before. Again, I'm not going to show any video of it. It's called Secret Space, the Cosmonaut Cover-Up, and it is on YouTube. You can find it. Uh, watch this in entirety, and it explains to you that Yuri Gagarin wasn't even the first man, uh, that there was others first, and many died. And uh, in this video, they'll show you how they cut out. If I could find the one scene, I would show it. But uh, they actually cut out people from the photographs uh, to make people forget that they even existed. So there would be... Yes. You've seen this? Yeah, and and I believe that was the you know the real space program right. where they detect that hey uh, we must be fake it because we can uh, still killing people trying to put on the spaceship and and trying to get out of the planet uh, because everyone that we put inside of the spaceship uh, dies. Right, and this guy flat out tells you right here, Doctor Sergey Khrushchev, and this is Nikita Khrushchev's son. And he's throughout the whole movie telling you that uh, these guys were faking it. They were uh, not able to go where they were saying they were able to go. Uh, when people died after they tried sending them up there, they would simply um, kill them and then uh, delete them from photographs. So there's, yeah. I can't find the actual scene, but there's, you know, they'll show you one photograph with a astronaut in it. Then they'll show you that same photograph that was released to the uh, Russians that shows that that person isn't in it because they had to erase these people from the memories because these people were dying uh, as they tried sending them up there. And I agree with you, this is kind of the real uh, space that they're talking about. And again, you know, I've also told many people about uh, my opinion as far as uh, it goes with when you, you have two different countries, right? You've got the United States and you've got Russia. And if people think that the story told in Russia was, oh, the United States uh, came along and beat us to the moon, and uh, aren't they awesome? Then you're dead wrong. What, what happened is there's a story that's able to be told to the U.S. people, uh, which is, oh, we won the space race, we beat the old Ruskies, uh, they didn't know what they were you know, doing, and we were able to come together with our great ingenuity and our great science, and we beat them to the moon. But the story told in Russia was one different. The story told in Russia was, we had the first man in space. We had the first animal in space. We had the first man in orbit. We had the first woman in orbit. And the stupid Americans came along and spent more money than they needed to getting to a place that we knew wasn't important. So both countries are able to tell a story to their citizens that makes them feel full of pride. And what do they do? They give more money to those space agencies. So you have to realize that the story that you're told in America is not the story told in other countries. Uh, it's not a matter of, oh, America need to, to, you know, America beat uh, the Russia and we, we had everything first, but they just came along and stole the moon. No, the story told is those idiots went to the moon, those idiots. Uh, but again, it's a story that builds pride in both people. And that's really the whole point of Apollo. You know, that was the, the point was that's why they handed it out to some 400,000 people to help with the Saturn V. This way, everybody knew somebody who worked on the Saturn V. It builds a sense of American pride. Does that make any sense? Yeah. And for me, it's in oh, you're breaking up a little there. Still breaking? Yeah, we lost you a little bit there. I believe my. No, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Let's try again. Hello, Iru. Try again. I don't know what happened to you. Oh. Actually, we got Bob. That's why everything's breaking down. Let me uh, bring this up here. My fault. <laughs> One second, Bob. I'm going to bring you up on screen here if I can get it up. Let's see here. All right. There we go. And you appear to be in landscape. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in landscape. Uh, how do you hear me? Hear me okay? Hear you okay. Yeah. The video yesterday through Zoom was 120 times better, but uh, it's still working. Okay. Well, that's good. It's a little bit uh, wonky, the, the video here. But, yeah, we're just out here on site, and uh, we've been out here essentially since uh, yesterday morning at 7 o'clock. And uh, we worked until, I don't know, late last night until sunset. Right. And then we were back out here at 8 o'clock this morning, and we're just knocking it out, plugging it out, uh, taking pictures, documenting everything. Um, we don't have any results uh, yet, obviously, because... We haven't tabulated it or processed any of it. But, uh, yeah, all goes well. We've got a lot of great people out here working on stuff. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, this is the hardest work I've done in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was you know, watching yesterday doing the, uh, the the live stream. And, yeah, you guys have to go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, who's that, Nathan? 
That's Nathan Thompson. Yep. Nathan, what's going on? Say hi to everybody. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Hey, hi to everybody. Nathan, on hi. Globusters. How we doing? Love you guys. Join the official flat Earth Globe discussion. Uh, when you're not on Globusters, look down with people about flat Earth. Love y'all. Ah, there you go. There you go. He kind of looks like uh, Forrest Gump. I thought he was going to take off running right now, go running across the United <laughs> States. <laughs> so, uh, oh, do, do guys... <laughs> run, Forrest, run. Um, so, do you guys think you'll finish the entire two miles? I doubt it. Um, we will be somewhere between one and two, but uh, I seriously doubt we're going to make two. It's very, very tedious, and we have been. You know, Chris has been super meticulous on this. Right. And we've had some issues where the, the wind kicks up. When it kicks up above about eight or nine miles an hour, um, what happens is it knocks the rods over. Right. And that's kind of been an issue, trying to keep them stable. So, uh, But we're still getting really good uh, shots. I'll go up to one of the rods here so you guys can see it. Beautiful. And so for every single measurement that we make, we have a weather station directly next to the rod so we can uh, measure temperature relative humidity barometric pressure uh, you name it it's recorded um, so all of that is time stamped and it's called out and in uh, duplicate redundant where's the uh, got, uh, where's the weather station display i was able to see that yesterday is it sitting next to it somewhere yeah the weather display station display is back here i'll go back uh, chris has got it mounted up to a golf cart which is really cool right <laughs> Yeah, it was really interesting to see the whole process yesterday, and I can even say that uh, before I listened to uh, Thomas kind of go, or not, uh, Robert, when I listened to Robert go through it, then I understood the experiment. Before that, I was struggling with it a little bit, but uh, it's a great experiment. I really like it, or at least observation. Don't want to say experiment. Yeah, careful with that. Yeah, we've got to be careful. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little bit yeah, hard I don't to know. see. I don't oh. know, but... No, and again, the video that we did yesterday looked great. So this is, you know, the video obviously that's going to be released eventually. We'll show all that. Uh, yeah, but the things it shows on there are what does it show? It shows temperature, humidity, uh, wind. Yeah, yep. humidity, moisture, barometric pressure, um, uh, high low for the day. And what else? Uh, just all kinds of stuff. I mean, cool. and it literally keeps track of everything. And then that communicates with the weather station via Wi-Fi? Yep, it does. So the, oh, there it went. See, there went a rod. It just got blown over. Um, so, yeah, you can see uh, uh, one of the guys carrying the weather station down. And like I said, what we do is we go every time we do a measurement, we put it right next to the rod. There's the rod. There's the weather station. And that way we have the weather conditions, all the conditions right, right at it. Right. And then, uh, yeah, so is there a way you can explain the experiment real quickly? Or um, I know Robert yesterday explained it perfectly, and he could probably do it in two minutes, but uh, he does it better than I can, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, well, basically what it's doing is it's uh, it, we're trying to test our geopotential service surface to see what the geopotential surface is without having to use any silliness like... Uh, 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 geodetic surveying. Right. Uh, in other words, this is an actual measurement where it's kind of akin to uh, Brian Mullen's force the level experiment, right? Except we're doing it optically, but we're doing optically with three reference points in the in the back, and then we're leapfrogging um, these sticks, so we're able to hold a constant level, and the accuracy of this particular instrument, this uh, trimble, uh, is one ten thousandth of a foot right and that's uh it's only accurate up to like 100 meters at that point right and that's why you guys are doing such small segments of uh, what are you doing 40 meters at a time yeah we're doing 45 meters at a shot so uh, unlike people like jesse kozlowski who would like to have you believe that you can use these things uh, no that's not true at all right he can't, uh, he can't look across two hundred. miles and, <laughs> and accurately you know, decide that something's dropped eight inches like that, yeah, that fool. Exactly. But as long as they're used within the manufacturer's specifications, they guarantee an accuracy of one ten thousandth of a foot. Right. Which is just mind boggling. And the way that it works, Chris was trying to explain it to me yesterday, but the uh, rods have barcodes on them. 
And uh, I don't know, it does some sort of a triangular reference on, across the barcodes and then it's automatically processed to tell you um, what the level differential is with extreme precision. It's right. just, it's really been an amazing learning experience to watch this and be part of it. And so there's a total of four rods, is that basically right? And then you measure in between each of them and then you basically leapfrog the first one to become the last one and kind of keep going in that manner yes and we're and on every one that we measure we reference the previous three to three to keep that uh baseline absolutely straight right to within that you know uh one ten thousandth of a foot all the way down the line yeah absolutely yeah it was uh really interesting to see yesterday and then those rods can, can you kind of show people where the uh the leveling bubble is on those rod? how are we keeping those rods straight yeah, there's a nice leveling Absolutely. bubble right there. It's leveling bubble right there. Let's see. Can you see it? Yeah, we can see it pretty A little good. hard for me to see. There it is. Okay. And as you can see, that's nuts right in the middle. Right. As long as that, that nuts right in the middle, then you've got it. And you've got two sides to work with. But, of course, the side we're working with is the barcodes, which uh, looks like this all the way up and down right and uh yeah just and I, I don't pretend to be an expert on this chris obviously is but um you know he's told me the specifications and generally how and uh, this particular piece of equipment is one of the most top of the line there are uh, you, you know absolute state of the art in the uh and, uh, very useful. I gotta say that. Whoopsie, did I lose you? Yeah, a little bit. I think Bob's okay. breaking up a little. Yeah, breaking up a little. Okay, but, uh, we'll let you go. We'll let me. Yeah, let me get. Up. Okay. Okay. What I can do is uh, let me. Uh, let me kill my video. Okay. There we go. All right, now we got you. A little better. Yeah, a little better. We can hear you great. Okay, cool. So, yeah, um, lots of people out there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 14, out, 14 of us out here currently. Or 15. There's a 15. And uh, we're kind of alternating, uh, spelling each other. And uh, everybody's just, uh, we've finally gotten our rhythm. It started out a little bit slow yesterday. But uh, we've gotten our rhythm. Everybody knows exactly what they have to do. And we're just going right down the line with it. Yeah, by the time I took over hosting the uh, the Zoom live stream, uh, you guys seemed to have a, a good system going. So it seemed to be working well at that point. I didn't get to see any of the morning work, but uh, I guess everyone was saying just getting down that system was a little bit difficult. But then after that, you seemed to be moving quite swiftly. Yep. Yeah. So and then anyway, what, so yeah. I just wanted to, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that. Uh, so Chris basically went out there and put those. Uh, nails, or is that what they're called? The nails that uh, the rods are sitting on top of? Oh, the spikes. spikes. Yeah, he drives oh, the spikes in. And I don't know if you saw him um, on FE Core, uh, but he released a video, and, and he's driving these four-foot spikes into the ground, and they will stay here in case anybody wants to come out and use the existing benchmarks that we have used to replicate our work. Oh, awesome um, idea. They'll be, they'll be here forever, uh, and well, until somebody comes and rips about, but uh, nobody's going to rip them out very easily because they're driven into the ground four feet. Right. And then he's mar <laughs> he, he marks those, and then basically what you do is you go with each leveling rod uh, or measuring rod, and then you s level it right on top of those nails, correct? Yep, that's exactly You literally set, you set the leveling rod, the base of the leveling rod, right on top of the spike itself, and then you level it out with the bubble, which makes it level uh, 360 degrees around or perfectly straight up and down. And uh, from that, they take the measurements. So it's really an amazing process, and this is not something that surveyors typically do. This is a process that was developed uh, exclusively by and for FE Core, but uh, all the details on exactly how it works uh, are on the FE Core website. We do have two professional surveyors out here. Uh, Chris Van Maitre is one. And uh, then we have Jason, and I don't remember his last name, but he's also another professional surveyor. So we have two of them that are overseeing this and doing the work. 
and uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, no, it was awesome, and uh, yeah, I really saw how meticulous um, that Chris was being yesterday with making sure that uh, he wasn't taking any readings until everybody confirmed that the rods were uh, perfectly level and the bubble was even. And so, yeah, it was a good, good, good show yesterday. Yeah. Yep. And like I said, it's tedious. And so, right. you know, what happens in the redundancy, you know, like I said, we have double and in some cases, triple redundancy. Chris is recording things in writing. Uh, uh, myself for Karen B have actually been recording them in a spreadsheet, uh, in Excel. And then, and we are also uh, making a video visual record of everything with audio of us calling out all the variables all the time. And then we're photographing the weather station with every single variable on it. So even if they don't trust our processing of the data, um, all the raw data would be available to anybody that wants to take it and process it. And if they don't believe it, they can go back out there and do it themselves. Absolutely. And all I can say is good luck with that because, man, this is work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw you guys just going back and forth. I kept saying, didn't we see that direction already? But then I realized you were uh, leapfrogging. And then, like you said, that uh, each time you leapfrog, you have to go back and, and verify again with the polls that you just passed. So uh, definitely tedious and uh, appreciate you guys going out there and, and uh, trying to make that observation. Yep. Oh, it's cool. We're, we're happy to do it. And, uh, you know, we all know why we're doing this. One thing I will say, though, Jaron, and, and, you know, at some point uh, I was thinking that maybe we should uh, try and figure out something to help Chris Van Matry out on this. Because Chris has actually got about $2,500 of his own money in this project. And, uh, you know, FE Core is contributing to it. But this is something that he really wanted to do. But uh, maybe at some point we can get some donations to help Chris out and kind of reimburse him a little bit. But, you know, we'll deal with that a little bit later, maybe when the results come out. But, yeah, it's very, very expensive to do all this and uh, an immense amount of man hours uh, and cost. Yeah, no, I bet. Uh, yeah, I would love to do that. Maybe we could do a, a little, you know, like they had a ranty thon the other day. Maybe we could do a, a chris -a -thon. Exactly. Yeah, okay. and he doesn't even know I'm saying this, guys. It's not like he's uh, instigating it, but, you know. <laughs> No, it's the just nice to do. Yeah, guy has unbelievable to put this amount of money that you know, of his own, you know, to uh, make this experiment possible. Or I shouldn't say experiment, make these observations possible. Well, and then some of the things I know he purchased. He was showing me yesterday the uh, the battery packs that he had to purchase just so that we could have continuous live footage the whole time. Yeah, he's got not only the portable battery packs. I've got one of my phone hooked to one of them right now, but he also has these large. Um, you know, power centers that will not, they're not only inverters, but they have USB power charging stations, all nine yards. Uh, we've got three or four of those out here that he bought them all. And uh, yeah, just an, an incredible amount of equipment that is at use here. Awesome. All right. Well, I thank you for uh, checking in everybody on Globusters. Thanks you. We're going to probably do a little shorter show today and then I'm going to come over there and uh, relieve Mike so that uh, he can get some sleep and I'll see you and talk to you over there. All right. Sounds good, guys. Have a great show, and uh, hello to everybody in the chat. All right. Appreciate you coming on, Bob. Bye, Bob. All right, All right Bob. All Take right. it easy, man. All right. Well, that was bye -bye. Bob Nodell, Xanadude60, who usually hosts this show much better than and, I do. Go ahead, Ira. And, and uh, No, I don't understand. We are in 2019, and we don't have, uh, you know, real-time video with all this 4G, 5G, but these guys did it in 69 <laughs> right. from the moon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From the moon. From the moon. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, and Iru, did you have anything you want to share while I'm on the Skype screen now? Or did you have uh, anything you're pre presenting today, anything with the moon, anything with that? Or no? Well, we can do no, that. I have a few things, but uh, I... I uh, I'm uh, waiting for. Uh, ah, okay. You show. Uh, you already show the the image or the footage from the Apollo 11 documentary. Was at the, at the beginning. Yeah, I just showed those couple scenes. Yep. Ah, okay, okay, okay. No, well, we can improvise something. Uh, I have a few things to. We can, you okay. know, talk about it. Yeah, go ahead, because uh, I have the Skype up now. So I can square it up and you can show whatever you want. Okay. Let me, uh, let me wait, uh, wait, wait me just a little second because no I problem. was working in. 
or the thing. Sure, yeah. But so everybody, uh, you can check out the FE Core website if you want to kind of get the details of what's going on. Uh, I'm sure that they're going to release a video soon, and then um, yeah, and then there is a uh, there is way to buy tickets to the live stream or to watch it. I don't know what it costs. I don't know anything about that. I just know that uh, I hosted it for about four hours yesterday, and we'll do that after this show today. Um, and really there wasn't that many people in there yesterday. I think maybe we had uh, 11 or 12, um, not including the people live at the event. Uh, so 11 or 12 people got to hear me hear talk me. about it. Talk about it. So I'm presenting now. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. So, uh, first let me just, um, share with you guys this, uh, Astronaut things, not just the Apollo 11. Uh, I'm talking about Kari Coleman. Uh, you know, just for the record of the show, uh, I have two separate videos, really short ones. Uh, the first one is uh, she talking about being an astronaut, and the second is this uh, supposedly that she 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 looks or she see uh, this black hole from space because the ISS has telescope to uh, to do that. So. I'm going to start with the first video. Zero and lift off. I like to tell people, because it's true, that there is a secret to being an astronaut. And, and the secret is that it's in Spanish. And the secret is, is that nobody just gets to be an astronaut. Where people like me, who grew up, I'm, I'm 52, I was born in 1960, and I never thought about being an astronaut. Because it just wasn't what girls did when I was growing up. And it wasn't until I was in college at MIT, Sally Ride, the first American woman astronaut, came to talk, and I just thought, wow, I want that job. I never thought I'd get it, but it turns out that real people get jobs like this. But it turns out that real people get jobs like this. And the secret is, is that nobody just gets to be an astronaut. But it turns out that real people get jobs like this. And so the space shuttle building all those things and bringing all those people up to space. So the first thing is that supposedly in 2024, uh, NASA is going to send the first woman to uh, the moon, right? I don't know if you read that news. I haven't heard that, but that, uh, that, makes, but that, sense. that, that makes sense. That what? Makes sense. Makes sense. That makes sense, okay. But the, I, I showed this girl because, you know, if you start looking this into the perspective of the social, you know, paradigm, uh, you can detect how this, you know, this, this is not just actor. They, they, it's like, uh, you know, brainwashing young uh, people. Uh, and, they, you know, the astronaut going to school, to university has have this... Uh, live talks with the ISS from schools or universities and all the time, you know. Uh, but when you go and if you type any name of the, you know, any astronaut, you're going to see the participation in uh, international conference. And uh, all the time they, they say, you know, different things about the same event, you know, like they... Mm, they they they, uh, they have mis mistakes or maybe they forget what uh, they say you know two years ago so all the time they trying to um, put out there new things that supposedly uh, these guys uh, or this uh, this astronaut did in the past but it's like uh, okay you don't you don't go anymore into a space but you bring all the time new things like you did. So one of the conference uh, was in this uh, event called um, Next. I don't know how to pronounce. And, you know, it's a bunch of nerds uh, looking things from outer space. So here is the part when all the time she, she needs to refer that um, the, the things that she show to the public is uh, real things. And here you can see... One of the, for me at least, is one of the biggest lies because she talks about this special telescope in the ISS, so I'm going to play it. Series of them, just to share a little bit about sort of the, the feeling of being up there and the point of view and how it's always different. And then here we are, right? So I want to say that we're like right in here somewhere. Yeah? 
I, I know all you New York, New York people know it better than I do, but you know, so we were watching. All the things you do, we are watching. Uh, and that kind of shocks, you know, like being the god, you know, everything you do in here down on the earth, we are watching you. Okay. <laughs> And Aurora, I'll just flip through these pretty quickly because you've gotten the idea. And, and if you look at the look for the astronauts' gateway to photography, you're going to see some of these things. And up close, I think is fascinating as well. Where this is the Patagonia and glaciers. There's that. See the. Uh, this is a, a, a crater, uh, a meteorite impact here. Um, impact crater there. Got a series of impact craters. Again, in the winter, it's easier than the desert. Uh, volcano uh, in Kuril, I think it was in Kuril, right north of Japan. Bahamas, a comet that Dan Burbank happened to catch, looking out the window, saw this thing. <laughs> I mean, oh boy. supposedly oh boy. look up out the window and took a photograph. She ran, I don't know if it was she or Don Petit that uh, ran to take the camera and, and take a picture of the comet. Why you don't film it? Why we can see stars? Just with a simple camera setup, we have the stars, the nebulas, the comet, the aurora, <laughs> everything. <laughs> took a picture and took a picture Isn't that awesome i mean it's like the, the universe in a movie but it's not animation. the universe is a movie but it's not animation it's like the, the universe in a movie but it's not animation <laughs> and these pictures now are don my friend don pettit and if you look up uh, saturday morning science he's just one of my favorite astronaut people and he just he does things like he's the one who brought cities and uh, cities at night to us from space because he figured out how to program the drill that we had up there so it would rotate at the same speed as our speed over the earth. I mean, I thought about that, okay? But you know, I just, I was busy playing the flute. I didn't do it. <laughs> this is not a photograph, but it's a, we have some telescopes that are mounted on the outside of the space station showing us uh, black holes station, <laughs> showing us uh, black holes. What? Is this a comedy? Is this a comedy? Did you hear it? Yeah, we heard it. Yeah, we heard it. I want to put it one more time because I'm shocked. Station showing us uh, black holes and, and showing, uh, showing us all sorts of things. Um, out, they're looking both down at the, at the earth and also out into space. So, I mean, why the people right in that particular moment stand up and, 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 and burn <laughs> this astronaut? Because uh, supposedly, we have telescope mounted outside of the ISS and uh, anybody see that telescope outside on the ISS in one, in, you know, in a particular spacewalk or something like that? Where, where is the telescope mounted outside of the ISS? Never seen it. Never seen it. The only reason I'm not answering here is because I'm echoing when echoing. you're sharing. When Go, you're sharing. Go ahead. Okay, I, I am still have echo? No, I do when I talk. No, I do when I talk. Ah, okay. But this is the kind, the kind of nonsense that we must be, you know, uh, be aware uh, because uh, supposedly recently we have a, a great event uh, where supposedly we collect the data to, uh, you know, produce the image of the black hole. But these guys saying that ah, we can see black holes all the time uh, outside from the ISS. And then we have this picture of the comet. Uh, with all the stars and all the, you know, the magnificence of the outer space, but we don't have nothing of that kind of pictures uh, from the, you know, in real time. So, the, you know, uh, I just want to show this because for me, uh, it's like this woman says before, uh, it is a movie. The outer space is completely a movie. Uh, it's not based on reality, uh, at least in the way that uh, this space agencies uh, are telling us. So another I, thing I that- I saw the Invisible, saw the invisible, man, invisible man once. Man once. <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah. They, they saw they, black they holes. Saw black yeah. holes. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, man, you, you drop a little water to detect where he, where he is. Uh, then I have here, and, and excuse me, but this is, this is real time, uh, trying to make some sense about the, the, the presentation that I'm going to make it. But 
uh, going back to the um, space program, uh, I don't know if you guys have the time to see, uh, I believe it's in Netflix. Uh, it's called Houston, We Have a Problem. I am not going to, you know, I'm going to try, you know, jump a little bit uh, with uh, still image for copyrights, uh, you know, maybe problems that we can have. But did you see it? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, what what do you think about it? You you think that this is a mockumentary, but showing real things in the ninety percent of the documentary? I actually have not seen this yet. I thought you were talking about could we see what you're showing? Could we see what you're showing? But also, oh, but also uh, okay. When you're sharing when both you're sharing, John and I, both echo, John echo. That's why we're being echo, quiet. That's why we're being quiet. Okay, okay. But well, I I really recommend that uh, you know anyone out there. Uh, look, this documentary is called. Uh, I believe the pronunciation is mockumentary. Uh, right. So they're they're like making like making fun of it. Yeah, but it's it, 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 you know it's with that title, but the documentary never uh, it's in that um, in that way. Uh, it's just you know it, it's a real the it's a real documentary with real things. They supposedly they just. Uh, interpreted a few, uh, you know, a few moments in in the history, but because they recreate that, but it's based on real events. And one of the, the those events that shocking me, and nobody talks about it, or at least you know, a, a really few people uh, uh, talks about it, is that the United States and the German. Uh, space program uh, are based on uh, one particular guy, which was called uh, Hermann uh, po Potognik. I don't know if you guys know him. I'm going, I'm going to uh, Google it so you can see what I'm talking about. And this is the this is the guy. It's a. Uh, uh, let me go here. Uh, this guy was um, one of the first guy who uh, wrote a book with all this um, futuristic concept of space, you know, spacecraft and spaceships, and how maybe we can leave the Earth based on rocketry. And uh, you know, it's it, it's really interesting uh, thing that uh, guy because when you when you see this documentary, or you, you can you can even you know uh, looking outside of the documentary, you can read history about this guy, and you're going to find that every of the space program was based in this um, in this guy, Herman Ponotic. What year was Nudo. that? What year was that? What? 1970s. Okay. okay. Uh, no, 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 no. 1970s. Uh, 1917. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And and he, you know, he draw all the rocket to go out of space, you know, and all the, you know, with two step, three step rocket, and uh, all, you know, all the concept that we see today was, you know, made by this guy first. So the history, it's that, and and it's, it's even. Uh, let me just put. Um, I believe it was even Arthur C. Clarke was uh, one of the fans of these guys. And he took a lot con of the concept of the space from this guy. So, you know, here you can see Arthur C. Clarke with the, with the book of uh, Herman Potognik, or I don't know how to pronounce because he is from um, Yugoslavia. So the documentary is really interesting because I'm going to try to, you know, to do my best uh, trying to explain this in English. Um, but the idea here is that, and this is real events, okay? What I'm going to share with you is real events. Supposedly, uh, in this um, war between Russia and United States to trying to reach the moon and blah, 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 the Yugoslav program was a little more advanced at that time than the United States and Russia. So Tito, which was the, you know, supposedly he was at the, 
dictator, di, uh, I, I don't know to, how to pronounce, uh, dicta dictator, is okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Supposedly he was a dictator. Uh, he sell all the space program from Yugoslavia to United States in the Nixon. Uh, he start in the Kennedy uh, presidents and then it was, you know, uh, took by by Nixon. But the thing is that all the space program of the Yugoslavian uh, country, they already already uh, knew that nobody can go to space. So they abandoned that space program. In fact, they they do the same kind of things, for example, for training, they train in underwater uh, tanks, you can see here, for example, doing the, the same thing that, you know, the American and the Russian did uh, uh, later. So it's like, and this is all real footage, okay? This is not uh, make it uh, for the documentary. So it's like they knew, the Yugoslavian guys knew that you cannot go out of space. So what they did was selling all the technology, all the, you know, the blueprints, uh, the concepts, the everything to United States, to United States. And of course, after a few months, uh, Tito received a phone call from Nixon <laughs> and saying, hey, this is, it doesn't work. But the problem here is that at that time, Yugoslavia become one of the most, uh, you know, rich country in Europe, because the amount of money that uh, Yugoslavia sell the space program to United States, it was a really, really huge. I, I'm talking about billions of dollars, and that, uh, you know, that period in time from Yugoslavia was the time that. Yugoslavia become a really rich country and all the people support Tito because, you know, suddenly Yugoslavia, you know, the, the, light, the standard of living in Yugoslavia become really, really high. So the people was really, uh, uh, really happy with uh, Tito, but nobody knew where the money come from to Yugoslavia because Yugoslavia is not, uh, you know, uh, a, a first uh, country. They don't have the, the industry that you expect to have with, uh, with, that, with that kind of country. So in the documentary, you can see even how Tito uh, uh, was invited to United States. And you can see Tito in real footage with Nixon, with Kennedy, uh, you know, uh, LBJ. people from, LBJ. Not, from United States coming to um, uh, coming to Yugoslavia to see the space program. Even here, for example, in this future, this, this is an astronaut from Apollo 9 going to Yugoslavia. And, you know, all this party, because this was the moment where Yugoslavia sell the space program to United States. So they receive with everything, you know, food, uh, music, everything, everyone's happy, you can imagine sell a space program in $20 billion. <laughs> and the problem is that this is a, a, an Apollo astronaut. Uh, I, I believe was a nine, uh, the Apollo nine astronaut. So all these are real events. And nobody talks about the relationship between the uh, United States and Yugoslavia in, in terms of the space program. In fact, you can see real video we, uh, in the when Tito uh, uh, see the moon landing and you know like laughing because he knew that nobody get out in space. So, well, they, this is the room where they, where uh, they sell the space program, things like that. And let me go a little bit forward. And after this and this is this is one of the key characters of the documentary because this guy this guy was and he's one of the engineering that uh, they need you know maybe I, 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 I have to uh, make a little uh, deviation from my uh, ex, you know uh, um, commentary this guy is a real engineering that uh, when the things turn really bad 
you know, in, in the in the sense of United States detect that all the space program was a bullshit. So they, you know, called Tito and say, hey, uh, we, we know that all you sell is completely garbage. <laughs> so you're going to uh, get, you know, return uh, penny by penny everything that we give to you in terms of the money. So the first attempt from Tito was saying that, okay, our space program is not a garbage, but yours, your engineering, uh, they don't know how to make it work. So Nixon tell Tito, okay, send me the best engineering of your country to United States to put all this together. And they did it. But to do that, they need to uh, kill these people in terms of the... Um, uh, uh, they, they fake they dead, they dead, his death with 30 engineers. And this is one of the guys. The, in fact, the, the beginning of the documentary start with these men uh, get... Um, uh, 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 no, uh, sorry for my English, guys. Um, no problem. The document, no problem. the documentary start with that man uh, be together again with his daughter, and she's crying. She, she's the real daughter, and for this woman, uh, his dad was dead uh, before uh, she born, and this is a real life event. So after like. 60 years, this woman uh, become aware that his father was alive, but they, the government fake his death for these purposes of the moon landing hoax. So that wow. is the big, wow. yeah. And we are talking about real life, real events. So this is the, 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 the documentary start with this guy, a space engineering and research scientist from the Yugoslavia space program, getting back to see his daughter after 65 years. So that is the level of, you know, insane that these things uh, bring to the society, to real life um, things. So here is uh, after uh, they meet, Again, you know, they, and you can, you can detect that, uh, you know, that strange feeling in the air because <laughs> supposedly for this woman, uh, his, his dad was dead and he grew up after, after 45 years, you know, without knowing his dad and his dad and thinking that uh, he was dead. And suddenly, you know, you receive a call and say, okay, your, your dad is alive but he fake his dead because a space program. <laughs> what, what's the documentary's what's name? What's the documentary's name? Houston, we have a problem. It's a Netflix. It is on. Okay. You can. It is on. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to finish that this. But the most important thing is two things happen. Uh, let me just go forward a little bit because I want to show that. Um, I believe it's somewhere here, uh, there is a, a piece of footage, real footage, where Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, after faking the moon landing, uh, they go to Yugoslavia uh, and they meet with Tito. And in that, in, that, um, in that situation, the only things, the only thing that Neil Armstrong says, uh, say to the public, was we are so happy to be here in Yugoslavia. This is a great, great country, and we're gonna go from here with more than we come. I don't know if I express myself good, mm -hmm. but that that was in terms of uh, because you know in this situation where Nixon says, uh, okay, you're going to return every little dollar that we give to you, and of course Yugoslavia. Uh, use that dollar so they don't have any more. So the first thing that they did was trying to say, okay, um, let me just send you for free 
Uh, here, here is Tito with Kennedy, for example, and this is real footage, you know, talking about this collaboration in the space program. So, you know, in, in the program school, you hear about this. Or, you know, in the documentaries of any kind, nobody talks about this. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And that is a really strange. You know, here you can, you, you, you have... Uh, let me just. Ladies and gentlemen, for this friendly reception and for the, the kind invitation, please accept our sincere thanks. It is with pleasure that I take this opportunity to have with you, Mr. President, frank exchanges of view of current developments and some questions concerned to both our countries. So, <laughs> uh, I just put that audio just for you guys see that it's you know real real events but i want to show you uh just a little well here you have the conversation between uh nixon and 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 tito let me go back a little bit because i believe it was uh here kennedy kennedy and and tito and this was the the conversation President? Yes, I am. Oh, how, how are you? This is. I am very good, Mr. President. How are you feeling? Are you feeling better? Yes, much better. This, I'm very sorry about your difficulties in New York. Thank you. But it is not so bad. Well, they always uh, they uh, fool me in New York too sometimes. So I hope that you have a good trip back, and we're very glad you came to the United States. Thank, thank you very much. And you give uh, my best to Mrs. Tito, and you. as I say, we're thank you. we've been glad you're here, and. Uh, we want you to come back sometime. Yes, thank you. Good. But I hope also that I will meet you in uh, Yugoslavia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Good. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was uh, in the first uh, trip that Tito uh, took to United States, trying to explain why the space program never worked. <laughs> that was the first one. And then um, I believe, well, Kennedy was murdered and Tito expressed himself a few words about that moment in time. And then I believe it's around here um, where uh, the astronaut uh, go to Yugoslavia. Let me just keep a little bit forward that the space program and... You know, sorry for my English guy. I, I hope you understand <laughs> what I'm trying to <laughs> to share with you. Um, let me go here. Nixon, Tito, ah, I believe it was here. Here is the part you can see here in Yugoslavia. Let me just put the audio. That they're not gonna... Tito obviously can't ignore their arrival, and uh, they basically came to warn Tito. There is Collins that they're not going to put up with Armstrong and Basaldrin. The money that had been given now became a loan, and this basically sets up a conflict between Yugoslavia and the United States that only gets worse. In only two short days, we've met the leaders, and we came to bring the spirit of Apollo, but we are taking more than we brought. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is like, a, a, you know, like a subliminal message uh, to Tito to say, OK, man, you fuck up us and nobody, you know, uh, fuck up United States. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then you, you can see Michael Collins talking about something. I, I can remember that. Look that. Look at the face, the worry face of Tito. Tito was living the best years in Yugoslavia history, and suddenly you start you start seeing Tito really worry with you know really bad faces. In fact, he died with a heart attack from the complete stress that he suffered. I'd like to say, Dovejenia, Yugoslavia. So you can see there all the you know astronaut going Tito with Nixon, you know because this is the second meeting that Tito needs to afford with uh, United States. So after this, uh, Tito said, okay, guys, uh, let me try to give back the money 
but not in, in, in you know, in bills, uh, no, no, in paper, because I don't have it. I use that money to, you know, uh, prop up the country, make up a, the country. a better living country for my people. <laughs> so let me just send you uh, cars. I'm going to build uh, Yugoslavia cars and I'm going to give you for free and you can sell it. And with the money that you sell that car, we are start to pay our, uh, you know, debt. Uh, yeah, uh, worth that. So they start to build one of the most shitty cars that you guys have in the history <laughs> of the automotrice uh, industry. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but this come from the problem for the space program, which was the Shugo car. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you go. You go. Yeah. So this is real history. So after this, Nixon call again Tito and say. Man, you are what, what? What you are thinking? I mean, you fuck up with the space program, <laughs> and now you sell, you, you send it this car, which nobody wants. It's a completely, it's it's bullshit. I think it got so, the award for the worst car the in the history car, of the world. In the history of the world. Exactly. Well, in the history of the world, exactly. So after that, this is the commercial. You know, uh, it by yourself. The, the the slogan of the commercial was. <laughs> Buy yourself more freedom, you go. <laughs> so it's like a, in the Simpson, like Canyon Nero, you know, <laughs> it was, it was the same. So after all this, Nixon called Tito and say, okay, prepare yourself for be invited, uh, for for having an, an invention in in um invasion. So that is. In the time, you know, when you go to real history, that was the time where uh, Yugoslavia received, like, uh, um, I don't know in English, the, the war for, you know, where, where, where the, the whole, uh, you know, United States start to say, okay, we need to help Yugoslavia because he, he, Yugoslavia is under of, the, uh, of dictatorship. So we're going to intervene Yugoslavia to uh, bring peace and democracy. And that was the end of Yugoslavia and Tito as we know it. And all that, and all that lives uh, of real people and all these events uh, was for trying to reach the moon, if you want to see it that way. And I know that I, you know, uh, really have a, a, a bad explanation because my English is so limited, but I hope you, are, you, you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. Absolutely, I enjoyed it. Absolutely, I enjoyed it. Okay, thank you, man. And and one of the most uh, real piece of all this is uh, if you enter into uh, Houston, we have a problem. And if you enter to the official uh, YouTube, um, if you enter to the official documentary, or I I should say doc documentary for me at least. Um, you have here a real, uh, you know, a delete scene where when these guys, uh, you know, the production team go to United States to, you know, talking with people from the space program and things like that, they receive a, a Homeland Security uh, visit to the hotel. And this is the, the, the real video. And the Homeland Security guys ask to the crew, uh, the production crew, to the passport. And uh, I can play it because you're going to have maybe, you know, some copyright issues. But if you see this, uh, they warn you, you have 48 hours to leave the country. So don't worry, tomorrow at uh, 7 a.m. it's going to be a car outside on the hotel and you take all the stuff and get back to Yugoslavia. Wow. But what... Wow. What what we did, you you, you did nothing, uh, guys, uh, gentlemen. Everything is okay, but you need to leave the country. And uh, it's you know here you can they they transcribe the uh, the conversation. So if you understand correctly, we had to leave US in two days. Exactly, gentlemen. <laughs> you 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 have 48 hours to leave the the country, so everything is okay. You don't have nothing to worry, 
but good night uh, in, two, in 40, 48 hours you leave the country. <laughs> so everything that get back to this guy, which was the maybe one of the uh, legend uh, about space and trying to leave Earth and propose all this uh, concept art that Pernemont Brown and you know Disney and all that companies uh, carry on in, in, in their documentary at the 50s, 60s through trying to convince people that there, there is possible to go to space and you know then Stanley Kubrick become aware of this concept art and blah 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 and nobody talks about this wow wow yeah it's it's really uh, this is uh, the original book and uh when you start to you know put all the pieces to get all the pieces together you you understand that this is a really you know a heavy situation <laughs> trying to leave the earth bullshit and bullshit yeah yeah completely so i i know that maybe this this <laughs> you catch this that, is you catch that? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's all bullshit i know that but um <laughs> i mean it's go beyond our imagination where the the, the the things that this guy did for faking all this and and trying to keep secret it's that was it's great. amazing that was you're okay. Stop You're sharing okay, for a second because I'm second. okay. Echo, Thank man. you, guys. My yeah, I'm starting to get some stress. Don't stress. Okay. Is it and better? sorry, everyone on the chat for my. Uh, no, you're, it was really good. And so everybody, you should definitely watch Houston. We have a problem. Um, that is available on Netflix. You said, Iru. Yeah, but it, you know the name is must be say like Houston. We have a million of problems because it's not just <laughs> one problem. Right. Yeah, Houston, we have nothing but problems, is what it should be Houston, called. we have bullshit. Yeah, we have bullshit. Um, <laughs> and Iru apologizes for his two F-bombs during that presentation. That was right, though. Um, yeah, it's, it's so funny because this goes back to the same things that we've been talking about this whole time with this moon landing stuff, and I can't wait to watch that. And then uh, also Iru said, search for Houston, we have a problem on YouTube so that you can find the deleted scene of them talking to... Who was that? FBI or NSA or who was that? Homeland Security. Yeah, yeah. Which is the same thing as NSA, NSI or FBI. Is is everything is the same thing? Right. Uh, we have Homeland Security because, of course, uh, nineteen box cutter carrying you know Arabs decided to take out some buildings and the most highly protected building in the world, the Pentagon, on uh, 9/11. So, uh, yeah, definitely check into that. And I also found during that little break, uh, let me see here if I can pull it up. Oops, now I don't know what I did with it. Wait, it is there. Oh, there we go. Um, I found there's a 10-minute preview of Apollo 11, the uh, documentary I told you guys about at the beginning. It is $5.99 on YouTube, but you can find it if you have a red box anywhere near you. I, I believe it was a dollar. 79 or something on Redbox to just rent it for a day. But uh, <clears throat> this is a 10 minute preview. But uh, just to show you again, what happened here? Yep, just to show you again, uh, they have these beautiful images uh, of their little rocket that they're going to launch, which nobody is saying that they don't launch things into the ocean. Uh, clearly, I think that they do. You can go through this and watch, but the one thing that they don't want to show you is all the space stuff. They want to show you this, they want to show you these guys get dressed. Um, they want to show you them walking to the pad. They want to show you that they were in the Air Force. They want to show you, uh, I don't know who that is, the first spacewalk. They want to show you this scene. They want to show you all the guys at the computers, all these guys. They want to show you them coming out to the van. Uh, but this is the 10-minute preview where they stop showing you anything is right here. Uh, simply because it, once you see it, you're going to see what a joke it is. They Once they start talking about the trip to space... They use nothing but CGI. They use nothing but drawings and animation. And they tell the story. And then they show you some stuff on the moon. But it's the same grainy, uh, see-through. Uh, I've always asked that question. I've never gotten a good answer. Why is, is Neil Armstrong see-through when he comes down the ladder and is standing on the moon? Iru, do you uh, know why supposedly, he's supposedly it's, uh, you know, it's because... They film the monitor and, you know, the contrast and the gamma and the blah, blah, and the glass of the 
television that they are recording and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and that's exactly the problem. Which is as they have no sense. No, that's but, exactly the problem. It makes no sense. And that, that is the issue yeah. is why would you have only filmed off of a CRT black and white monitor and then lost the actual real videotapes? It makes no sense. It makes no because sense Tito, unless they faking because it. Because Tito Space Program. Right. Yeah, because Tito <laughs> that sold, is us, why. sold us some fake bullshit. So, I mean, you can look on top of that. Another thing that we uh, talked about was the Dutch moon rock, uh, which is, you know, people can argue about that however they want, but you've got the United States who gives other countries um, this commemorative plaque. One of them they gave to the Dutch. The Dutch goes and decides to open it up and test it, and it comes back to be petrified wood. And, and I'm sorry that if if my friend gives me some some gold nuggets and says, here, Jaron, I'm giving out these gold nuggets and it's great. I'll just take this one. And I'll take this one. And then I find out John took one too. And then I find out down the road that John had his tested and it came back to be nothing more than a rock. It wasn't actually gold. If you think I'm going to buy that mine's gold, uh, you got another thing coming. It's just not going to, it's ridiculous. So I've got a, uh, Something I wanted to share about uh, images from the moon. I guess, it, well, the the Earth from the moon. If I can do a screen share. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> Should be All right. set up. I'm ready to go when you are. Okay, Why let me see if I can remember thing? how to do it. I keep putting up the pre-show thing. Sorry about that, folks. I have the wrong image. Let me actually get rid <sighs> Wait of this. Wait a minute there. Lay out. Yeah, I suck <laughs> at this. Um, where do I where do I go to share my screen? And and remember share the screen with us, uh Sharon, uh inside the Skype. Well I can't yeah. if, he, if he shares the screen. So John in the lower right you should see a um uh it's two squares, like one square behind another square. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Oh, let me close the chat, and I think that ought to, there it is. Yeah, if the chat's open, it hides those. So okay. yeah, okay. So sharing screen, start sharing. There we go. So you should see my little artboard here. I do. Okay. So um, this right here. Let me zoom in on this a bit. This is uh, supposedly a picture of the Earth taken from the Moon during the Apollo missions. And um, a couple things that we can surmise from this image is that uh, we are standing perpendicular to the ecliptic plane or like parallel to the axis of the Earth because you, you can tell the terminator lines right here. That means the axis would be going like, you know, this way. Uh, let me make that so you can see it. Uh, make it a little larger. But do you follow me so far that, um, you know, according to this image, we're perpendicular to the ecliptic plane and the Earth's axis would be like here because we can see the Terminator line. It's a almost full Earth, right? Not quite full, but we can tell that there's a Terminator line. So that's sort of our spatial orientation based on the information that we have here. Okay. So does that make sense so far? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what that means then is the only way that we're going to be able to um, get this sort of a view from the moon, like we couldn't be standing, and by the way, because the Earth is, is fully lit, then we must assume that uh, according to an observer on Earth, it would be like basically a no moon phase. It would be just a barely crescent lit moon because uh, one face of the moon always faces the Earth, and so if you're standing on the moon looking at a fully lit Earth, then the moon phase, according to an observer on the Earth, must be like new moon, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. I always thought that the, in order for them to have seen the Earth from the moon, it would have had to have been above their heads. Right. Yeah. That's, a, that's another big thing, too. Um, but basically, to, what you can surmise from this is the only way that you're going to see, because uh, it looks like we're on the light side of the moon here, right? Because this is well-lit um, dirt and rocks. So, uh, you know, if we're taking this picture for granted and say, okay, they're on the moon taking this picture, they're on the light side of the moon. Um, and the only way that you could even possibly get this sort of a snapshot is if you're standing on top. So, like, let me get rid of this um, so basically they'd have to be standing like here 
Uh, they'd have to be standing like here and facing this direction to see the basically fully lit Earth. Well, the thing is, if you look at all the places that they landed for Apollo missions, they're nowhere near the, near the top of the moon, right? So they're uh, kind of close to the top of the moon from some of these locations, but uh, more or less, they're, they're certainly not right at the very top of the moon. So I think this image here is uh, yet another example of them faking images from the moon. Because uh, geometrically, you know, it's pretty basic geometry. Um, I just don't see how it's possible that they could get an image like this of the Earth. Uh, unless, again, unless they're at the very top of the moon standing here, you know. Because if, if they're standing here, they're not going to be able to see the Earth for the curvature of the moon. Like their, their line of sight would be tangent out this way. <clears throat> um, like that. Uh, if you're if they were standing, you know, again, closer to like, let's say. Let's say they're at one of these locations. Uh, say the Apollo 16, April 27th, 1972, like if they're down towards the, the middle of the moon, then their view towards Earth would necessitate that the Terminator line be like this you know what i mean um because they'd be standing on the side of the moon and so they'd they'd see the terminator line not um you know basically they wouldn't be standing parallel to the axis as they are so i just thought that, and i'm gonna i'm trying to work this into a video um so forgive me if my my thoughts are still a little bit um scattered at this point but hopefully that made sense that this is just another instance of how the uh, you know the Apollo astronauts are faking or were faking images from the moon in order to trick us you know to what end or for what for what reason who really knows but uh, the fact of the matter is is you know I just don't see how they could get um, this sort of image that we see here um, from any of these locations that they allegedly landed so yeah hopefully that. Uh, does that does that make some degree of sense or yeah absolutely yeah and i heard this before so yeah yeah pretty pretty crazy stuff but it's like the more you look into nasa's images and their claims and their their uh uh videos and pictures it's just uh becomes more and more obvious that they've been faking all this stuff all along um and it, you, know, you don't really have to try that hard um i think the big problem is is uh for decades People have just uh, agreed with NASA and taken what they've uh, claimed at face value without even thinking of questioning them uh, for so long, you know, that NASA, they can be pretty much as sloppy as they want. They can get away with pretty much anything because uh, people don't question them. Uh, people don't disagree with them ever. And, you know, we few that do question and disagree with them. They just, you know, they ignore us or they go back and they they'll they'll delete things or they'll change things. Right. And, you know, you mentioned them losing all of the uh, telemetry data and losing all of their their live uh, or the original reels. Uh, you've got people like uh, Kent Hovind who believe that, yes, NASA went to the moon, but they also faked all of the footage in case they lost it or in case uh, the, you know, the radiation from space destroyed their, their footage. Um, so yeah, they went to the moon, but they faked the footage just in case. I think that's uh, Joe so, Rogan's position too, at this point is that uh, they went to the moon. They clearly had to have gone to the moon, but a lot of the imagery and video is probably faked because they weren't sure they'd be able to get back through the radiation. And that's, that's the best method, I guess, is just to fake it to or everybody. Or the aliens. Or the aliens, yeah, the aliens that were on the moon when we got there and told us to go away. Uh, if you really want to see real images of the moon, I could just bring this up and I'll share it with you guys. Um, oh wait, i got to wait for John to stop sharing. Yeah, let me stop sharing. I'm not sure how I do that. Oh, there we go. Stop sharing. Pretty good. There, All share, right. Share it back to you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so this is from JAXA. Um, and, and this is supposedly real footage of the moon and the earth here. Here we go. 
No, I'm not. This isn't a joke. This is not. Wow. This wow. is supposed to be real. Yeah. And they did, and, and they do this kind of uh, render because supposedly there is no atmosphere, so there is not like a secondary bounces of light or something like that. So they use only one directional light, and uh, <laughs> it's so. It's you know. so bad. It's so bad. And yeah, yeah I'll yeah. put the link to that in the description. But these are and there's video after video on this site, um, which is the darts. Isas. Jaxa. Jp. Um, usually you can, let me see if I can pull this out. Sometimes you can get, yeah, you can get into their file structure here and there's just video after video after video after video. Uh, if I'm showing people what's going on here. Yeah. Um, all the, all these videos are just MP4s of, here, click on this one and you'll get another, look at this. Uh, this is a, li a little more, you know, sandy look. Yeah. This is a little more sunny. It's a sunny day on the beach. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean sand, you know, like sand texture you know sand sandy got you yeah sand sand yeah thank for the advice man but i mean how easy is this for them to make with 3d rendering no this is this is really easy because first of all uh, nasa provides you all the uh, texture for mars uh, for the moon from earth for every planet out there so or supposedly planet out there so you just go to the archives of nasa you download in 4k 8k 2k whatever you need and you map in into a sphere you apply a displacement map and in the into the displacement displacement channel and you have it this uh, in, in terms of you know i not exaggerated but in one minute and a half you have this you see mountains coming up over the edge here, which we never see from any video footage, never see from any balloon footage on Earth. Um, it's just so much rendering here. And again, I'll and how easy how easy is for these guys to go into the supposedly uh, moon landings and film of the, all the right. you know but they can't evidence do of the humans being the presence humans being there. No, you can't get that. And if you go LRO, you know proof of. No, don't don't talk about that spaceship because it's your you know, in the eclipse days they turn it off because oh, if not the battery of the spacecraft could be uh, <laughs> go out and never turn back again. I love this. This is third... that is that that is the the, the 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 official narrative. This here says that is third why party we don't evidence. see any eclipse in the end. The third party evidence for the Apollo moon landings I just looked at is the LRO, which is not third party. It's NASA. <laughs> oh, no, you, you heard that, right? Yeah, I you mean, told me that the official video talking about that. We don't have any real uh, time, uh, you know, uh, footage uh, uh, for the eclipses because we can run out of battery. Right. Yeah. So we can't, they got to turn it <laughs> off for that, that, that time around. Uh, and again, this is how desperate people are to believe this stuff. I mean, this would be... Iru and I could make this image in two minutes. I don't know you, man. Talk I could do it. Just for me. I could do it in three minutes, probably. Prove it. <laughs> 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 Look at this stuff, man. And and people will, will throw this at you. I'll get emails and, and messages from people saying, this is proof we're on the moon, you idiot. This is uh, Look at all this. How could they look fake at all this? Look all these arrows. Yeah, <laughs> look at all these arrows. How could they fake this little drawing here? It's like, give me a freaking break. And again, if we just go back to what we were just looking at of the um, all these videos, let's bring up another MP4. I mean, if you can get this kind of, what's going on here? Again, I was just clicking. I have no idea what we're about to see. Cause that's, uh, and I'll put that link to what is going on here. Oh, I can see, I think, moon land coming here, possibly. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know. What, I was trying to look for more of that moon bullshit. Let's uh, try this one. I'm just clicking on MP4s. <laughs> here we go. So, I mean, and they all look so different, and, and yet people want to believe in this fantasy so strongly that they'll just buy into this and and, and believe it believe these videos are real uh, one thing i wanted to mention about the uh, apollo 11 video when you do watch it uh, you have to watch the landing itself it's got some data on the screen when they are landing and it shows them you know hovering over the moon at 50 60 000 feet something around there and you have to watch the time it takes them to get down to the moon 
from 60,000 feet and watch it. There's no change. And it's got this data on the screen for you. I can't show it to you because I don't have the movie on here. And plus, you have to rent it. Um, but uh, just when you do rent it, if you do watch it, make sure you pay close attention to the last 60,000 feet when they land. Uh, it is hilarious. There's no sound of any d descent engine firing. There's no sound when they say engine off. There's no no evidence of the sound turning off. Oh, shakes. No, there's nothing shaking. That's right below their feet. A huge uh, thrust engine going right underneath them. You don't hear a thing. The guys are as calm as can be. You know, you know, thirty feet, twenty feet, five feet. You know, it, there's just no uh, danger inherent. And, and then again, I've always mentioned before that uh, they never mention while they're on the moon, Neil or Buzz. Hey, look at the Earth. Take a photo of the Earth. Look how amazing it is. We traveled 240,000 miles through the blackness of space. Look at our home. Take a picture of it. They don't mention that while on the surface of the moon. The only reason for that, in my opinion, is because you're on the surface of the Earth. And if you're on the surface of the Earth and you're make-believing a story, the one thing you might forget to point out is the amazing Earth that would be in the sky. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, uh, somebody that's, that's sitting there lying about uh, the situation that they're in, um, they're not going to think of everything. You know what I mean? Right. Like they'll they'll get certain details that they scripted ahead of time, but they're they're not actually there. And so, yeah, they're going to make mistakes and they're not going to be uh, thorough and descriptive. And uh, it's obviously not going to be a natural thing that they're going through. So, yeah makes perfect sense no and, and you know c c can you open uh the video the supposedly wikileaks uh, moon landing video Do i don't know if you saw it i don't think i saw is that what's on um uh, I, it's out there everywhere daryl right marble's now. channel I, d marble uh could be but if you put uh wikileaks release moon landing uh, hoax you're gonna see uh, because i want to make it just a, a little comment on that and um, so you WikiLeaks, must be moon landing? WikiLeaks uh, moon landing, yeah, because I I didn't find the you know the official link. Uh, I saw it um, on YouTube everywhere, uh, and if you can find it, uh, I can send you the the link in the chat. Are you watching? Because I want. Are to... you watching my screen? Yeah, I'm watching your screen. Do you see? I and... put WikiLeaks moon landing. Uh... Yeah, put you know hoax maybe. It works, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm searching here in my computer, so uh, you can... Whenever you look up anything oh. moon landing, all you get is the stuff saying that hoaxers are full of it. Uh, a moon hoax update wiki links? That's... Uh, yes, could... Mm, 54 maybe. minutes. No, because that is 44 uh, minutes and... Subo no, 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 not that one. But let one. me just... Uh, I'm going to give you the link uh, right now... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, because I, I I just want to share with the people uh, maybe my what is you know like a, a little uh, red flag uh, you can you you uh, I I post the link into the chat so uh, if you want to open that is from the Spanish channel and um, and just turn the sound off because and show it. yeah Oops. because for me it's you know could be. Uh, could be real footage. Uh, some part of that, maybe it's real footage because you can you can see it and and it's look like it is some real thing. But when you go, for example, to I'm searching in my other monitor. I believe it is. Um, uh, Squared up a little bit better. Let me just. Think, oops, uh, it's about one. six minutes. Uh, let me square it up a little better. For, for you. example, the first one is in the seventh. Seven minutes and twenty seconds. Okay, so I'm going to but seven twenty. Okay, starting from seven. Okay, here. seven and twenty seconds. But there is gonna be one more uh, ev evident. For example, the hood that appears on the screen. You know that black, uh, you know, square, uh -huh. like you know, like a hood. And there is other one more evident. Uh, I'm trying to 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 find it. Uh, I don't think. Uh, for example, if you go uh, to three minutes and twenty-one second, I don't think the cameras uh, have that uh, at that time. You, you, you know, I mean, um, it's like a modern hut, uh, that kind of things. And there is another one that appeared uh, at the two here, two minutes and fifty 
uh, 55 seconds. Two minutes, and yeah, put it about that. It's going to come in, you know, with all the histogram of the level of the image, that one. I mean, this hood, I, I don't believe it's real at that time. Um, it's more like someone, you know, put over the some original video. So for right. me, it's like, I assume that this is a modern intervention, you know, you know, you know, trying to be more real or something like that. So I just want to share with you guys, like for me, it has, you know, uh, some kind of uh, training uh, videos mixing with the supposedly missions and then they add some, you know, a few things that it's a little strange at that time they have that kind of hoods, uh, you know, on the on the screen. I never saw that, at, you know, in, in any other uh, videos. Uh, and, and I, you know, I mean, for my profession, I, I, I have a lot of um, study in the history of motion graphics and things, and, you know, camera and uh, camera technology and all that kind of things. And, and I, I, I never find the original link to WikiLeaks to, uh, you know, say, okay, yeah, they I'm are the releasing this. I'm the same way. I've never found that on actual WikiLeaks. Yeah. So I and for it me, it's a red flag. Thing. That kind of huts, or hoods, I don't know how to pronounce it, but... Uh, it's a little strange that appear on the top of the image. It's something more modern than antique. Uh, antique. Hoax. So, yeah, it's maybe, you know, <laughs> this kind of video to reach some, you know, go be viral or things like that. So I just want to... Yeah, be careful uh, on that. Yeah, exactly. That is why I, I'm not uploading to my channel. For me, it's not a complete uh, real thing. Yeah, I've never included any of that stuff in any of my videos I don't talk about. I've heard people talk about before. Oh, the, the ladder falls down and hits the astronaut. I mean, that stuff's not real. So uh, be careful on what you, you know, just repeat or show because a lot of it is meant to um, confuse, you know. So, um, yeah, so we talked about all the moon landing footage that is lost, of course. Uh, what do you guys think about Neil Armstrong not swearing on the Bible? Is that big for you or? Ah, uh, no, that is uh, really hilarious. Yes. I don't know, to, to pronounce, yeah. But, you know, it's like you say, I mean, first of all, why you're not going to do? I mean, right. do it do it anyway, you know, just for, for, for stop that situation, you know. And uh, you, you have $5,000, right. supposedly. So I put the hand, you know, over even in the Lester Crowley book, if you want to. Yeah, I'll swear on anything if, if I know it's true. Yeah. So if I've been to the damn moon and somebody says, swear on this Bible, you went to the moon, I, I cannot even imagine any reason that I would not. It doesn't matter if I hate the person. doesn't matter if I disagree with everything they say. doesn't matter if they're making a movie t saying that I didn't go. It wouldn't matter to me. If somebody said, swear on the Bible, you went to the moon, I'd slap my hand so quickly on there and say, I swear on the Bible that I went to the moon. And then if somebody, if I still don't, and they say, hey, we'll give you $5,000 if you do to the charity of your choice, I can't imagine any reason why anybody would look so shocked, so dismayed, so nervous about that situation as exactly. Neil Armstrong. So And, and, and the excuse, it's probably a fake Bible. Right. <laughs> why why do you mention fake, <laughs> you know? Yeah, knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. Like, what difference does that make? If it's a fake Bible, you could still swear on it. What difference does it make if it's a real or the, fake the Bible? The Bible is fake anyway, so, I mean... <laughs> no, sorry for that joke, I know. Bad I, joke, I don't want... no, no, it's a good joke. But you know what I mean, I, it's ridiculous. Uh, and you, you can see all the, you know, the, the atmosphere that start to form in, uh, in that uh, real event, you know. You don't have to uh, go there uh, past, you know, all that bad situation. You just put the hand and go by or not you, you, if you want to you just go away don't even speak with that person yeah i, I just Be i can't professional i mean uh, yeah knowing you that's probably a fake but i'm not going to do it not for you you don't deserve for me to swear on i mean it just makes no sense to me if somebody honestly doubts something that i say i've done and they say well swear on the bible that you did just to prove it uh, i can't imagine a situation where i just say no i'm not going to do it i'm not going to swear on the bible for you uh, just do it 
Uh, we wouldn't have something to talk about now. What, what, are, what are we going to be saying? That Well, he swore on the Bible that he went. No, I mean, obviously, uh, the only reason there's a story there is because he didn't. And uh, if you know, the whole moon landing is a religion. Um, everything about it is a religion. You have to believe in it. You have to trust authority in it. And with all the lies that have been told by NASA, by our government, um, how anybody can believe that. And one of the things I brought up is I'm still amazed that people... Um, in other countries, dare believe in the moon landings. Uh, I can understand because of the American pride involved in the accomplishment that was Apollo. I can understand why Americans will be attached to that and have a hard time shedding that. My grandfather worked for the, built the Saturn V. My, my great uncle's sister helped build the Saturn V. I can understand. Well, and all the, the propaganda as well that was directed at the American public. I mean, it, they laid it on pretty thick, too. So Right. And the TV, that too. the TV had just come out, you know, and, and so uh, it was just the very, you know, kind of the first time around a lot of people having TVs in their house. And when they heard that there was going to be live footage, uh, they didn't have any reason to doubt it. You know, they, they assumed that that couldn't possibly. I mean, I don't even think they, it ventured in their mind that it couldn't be true. Uh, although I've heard a lot of reports, uh, especially if you've listened to um, Dave McGowan's book, uh, Wagging the Moondoggy, uh, he talks a lot about the, the actual distrust. I think he found some report that 30% of people uh, thought that it was possible that it was hoaxed uh, back when it happened. Uh, and, and, you know, there's so much talk that he goes into about all the things going on because people forget that Nixon was the president for every single moon landing which is crazy to think about. You'd think that it went through different presidents. There was other presidents involved. No, every single time anybody's landed on the moon, Nixon was president and Nixon well, had a bunch of other things going he's not, on. He's not a crook though. No, <laughs> he's honest. He's a very honest guy. He never lied to people. Uh, so, you know, I don't know why you would doubt that. Uh, another big problem I have with the moon. What about slow motion? Uh, well, how did they convince people that in one sixth gravity, with less atmosphere or zero atmosphere, unless you believe now that the atmosphere extends past the moon, how would it be slow motion? It is ridiculous that anybody bought onto that. Uh, it would be simple to move. It would be, you know, for, for me, if you if I weigh 200 pounds and I put on a 200-pound backpack and, and, you know, or a 100-pound backpack, so let's say I weigh 300 pounds, at one-sixth the gravity, that means I weigh, I weigh 50 pounds, but I still have the same muscle mass that I have. So, and I have no atmosphere blocking me. If I go out and wave my hand, I've got air, I've got to move out of the way. When you don't have an atmosphere, everything would be quicker. You would be more fluid. You'd be able to move faster. You would not lumber along in slow motion as if you're bouncing on the moon. And then on top of that, you'd be able to leap so freaking high. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, I, yeah, have, this, I have the same vertical leap that those guys had on the moon now, and I'm a fat ass. So how is it possible that those guys were able to jump up and barely get a foot off the ground, a, a foot vertical leap. They should be able to jump the lunar rover easily. Yeah, yeah. And can I share the screen? Absolutely. Wow, you are so gentle. Well, well, when I'm just trying out to, there. Brian, I'm just trying to be nice because I have to okay, run it and I don't <laughs> want to screw things up. And things up and okay, I'm, I'm, screen, I'm oh, sharing. Wait, I have to stop. Sh I have to stop. Sh Hold, on. Hold on. No, you're not sharing okay. yet. No, you're not sharing yet. Okay, let and me. I'm going to be quiet because I'm when you share, I echo. Share, I echo. Okay, I'm sharing now. So, talking about this slow motion, uh, I I always, uh, you know, uh, remember this event. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, is from the Aaron uh, documentary where um, Buzz Aldrin talked about the slow motion world. So I want to present. So for the record, you're on. You're on. Here we go. Moving on the surface was quite easy. The lower gravity gave the overall impression of a slow motion world, of a slow motion world, of a slow motion world, of a slow motion world. So when you, for example, um, you know, when you take off that uh, slow motion world, <laughs> you can clearly see that, that this guy is on the desert or, or, or some studio, you know, because when you retime the image and, and you retime it very, very, you know, easy, uh, if it's like you said, I mean, why are you going to move more slowly if you are out of atmosphere, you don't have any kind of friction or, or 
And uh, if you combine that with all the strange movement of the astronaut, you know, wait, real quick, like make, some, sure, real, make sure people understand that you sure people understand you've that sped you, this up. You sped this up. Yeah, got gotcha. you. I, I I I double the speed. Okay. Uh, so what we're seeing know, here is uh, double footage because people might be seeing that and saying that doesn't look slow motion, that's but that's because we doubled it. That's because we doubled it. No, no, that is when you took out that slow motion world and you just you know uh, put in like a real footage uh, in a real frame rate. Uh, you're gonna see this. Uh, you know, like it. They, they are not on the, uh, in outer space. In fact, it's not just the the. Um, it's not just the. Um, the slow motion sensation is also when you start to look at, uh, at this, why this astronaut walk uh, in diagonal, for example. It doesn't, and it, it does, you know, it look at the backpack, how shake side to side, like it's, it's empty, you know, it's like, uh, ah, yeah, I'm jumping. And you start looking at how the someone is like pulling strings because the astronaut is like, uh, you know, it's like uh, still and suddenly someone is pulling the astronaut to the side and, you know, start going, you know, th th it's not any correlation with any regular movement. Uh, in fact, there is someone is that one, for example, <laughs> what happened there? Oh, this is classical. I mean, the guy is a stand up, you know, and suddenly someone pull up. <laughs> you can, you know, from the from the hips, you know, from the I, I hope from the hips, but because it's looking someone is pulling up from the X. <laughs> but you think they you have know, balloons attached? Balloons Europe? attached? Europe? I don't know if it's uh, a, a balloons. Uh, I, you know, maybe there is some kind of uh, uh, crane up there. Gotcha. Uh, I, I don't I, I don't know if it's something that uh, you know because. Of, this is classical. I mean, why you don't go, you know, how, how is possible that the most difficult thing in the moon is get on your knees? <laughs> yeah. Why this astronaut, you know, this is nothing that is not related with gravity. You know, I mean, why you, you, you can't just get on your knees right. and right. pick up the tool? That is, you have like a cable attached somewhere could be a mechanical device for me it's a mechanical device and it's not a balloon but could be a balloon could be a balloon i i i don't know uh but this is a have any sense i mean you you are not restricted to go down on your knees at least you have like a setup for certain height uh for faking the champs but it's not compatible to get on your knees I wonder if people would, if would, people uh, would uh, oh, go ahead. I'll finish when you're ahead, done. I'll finish when. No, 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 please, please. No, because I'm echoing. I'm echoing. Ah, okay. No, and you know, in, in modern terms, uh, I, I just going to remind everybody. I always show this because it has a, the, the sound of the motor. Uh, let me go very quickly. I'm not going to spend much time, but after all this, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, not uh, as great you, you start see all this strange behavior and Scott Kelly and can to do those, restore but, his position uh, until the guy here the 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 red one uh, he's going to you know warning warning the the guys behind the camera or in the control room or something like that that okay I see the problem and he goes and touch he puts the the, the hand into a button and you can clearly see how synchronized is the sound when this guy touch a button then you can clearly see or hear the sound of some kind of rolling machine and then you have the confirmation in the cloth of scott kelly moving really strange you know into uh mechanical position that 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 is impossible i mean there is no any explanation that that cloth He's going to move in that way. Yeah, Miles, I'm uh, I'll but one of these bracelets. I, 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 you know, um, you I make another um, observation. Sure. This is from the uh, head politics um, channel. And here you can clearly see the, the switch. Be like because, my... for example, this guy is 
like stuck in, in the air and he's going to pull out this uh, device, you know, and gently go down. So there is uh, an Argos system in the ISS and this beam performs a uh, sign 60s from the 60s. So why this guy touch this, uh, which, which is the name of this? Uh, hmm, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Well, uh, you know, put a generic lever. 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 That one. That one. So he's pull this lever and gently go down. And that is not the first time that we we see that because, for example, here in, in this famous um, uh, famous clip where everybody take the attention to the cloth of the Canadian astronaut, but in this part. Look, the, he's going to take some kind of lever and move it. So when he touched that, allow to the astronaut to make a roll, which he even can complete. And you can see this hand moving something, you know. So all the time, you can clearly see this kind of behavior when the astronaut go somewhere in the space station and touch something to... Uh, release or or uh, move the cables that are supporting these guys. So, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, the only the only piece of footage that I found that where you can clearly hear the sound of the cable rolling, it's the first one that I that I show. Hanging out up here, watch my buddies hang out. We're ready to hang out with you guys. Welcome aboard. You know, I mean, <laughs> this is completely clear, yeah, and I believe this one, uh, this is the original footage, the complete footage. And let me just go to that part. And here you can see that that guy is putting the hand. Uh, let me go forward uh, here. So this is like a wall which is in front of the hand. So the device, the button, the whatever, it's behind that wall that you can see the fingers. You can see two fingers in the front of the wall and two fingers behind the wall. And he pushed something because he's pushing himself out when he pressed that. And after he pressed, you can clearly hear the sound and see the cloth moving in, in a really strange uh, direction, you know. So they have all this kind of equipment. Well, they're certainly faking it somehow. They're certainly faking it some. Yeah, they they are faking it completely. But you always uh, can play golf in the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna stop sharing it. We also lost John. I don't know if he came back. He might be gone. He said his internet went down. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here shortly. I did tell them that I would be back there fairly quick to do the uh, live stream. So there's so much more to talk about the moon. Oh, I was going to say before he went, I was like, I wonder if I could get a, a fund for a balloon and then figure out what would cause my weight to be, you know, about 50 pounds, attach a balloon to my back and see if I'd have the same issue. I bet you I would, uh, trying to bend down and pick something off the floor. I would have to kind of do a little bounce and, and kind of get the leverage going. Uh, I don't think it would be very easy just to lean over and pick something up off the ground, um, especially if you're trying to keep your feet attached to the ground so that you don't look like you're attached to a balloon. So this would be it. And be Ranty, Ranty Flat Earth want to give you a thank you for the drone campaign. I, I, I don't want to forget that. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll tell everybody that. Um, if you want to donate if you haven't seen the rantiathon i was on that for uh, three hours the other afternoon on ranty flat earth's channel uh, he's trying to raise a gofundme for uh, a drone and i believe you can go to if it still works let me type it in myself tinyurl.com slash ranty drone make sure they didn't kick me off that yet hopefully it's still there yeah so let me go show you that let's go to here and there you go. So again, it's just uh, tinyurl.com slash ranty drone, and you will get to his GoFundMe campaign. He's at 925 pounds of 1,100 
1,429 pounds. I hate even looking at that. It's just ridiculous. Get, start going by dollars, would you? Just easier for me to understand what's going on. Anyway, um, he's had some shares on Facebook. He's very close to his goal. I'm probably going to be having him on my show sometime this week uh, to be going over swell and tide height, talking about that, and then also uh, just trying to get a few more people there. Ranty's done some of the best observational work, him along with uh, Dave from Wide Awake, another channel that uh, I owe a lot to just by being able to go to their channel and make observations and watch what they've done. Uh, and it's, it's a lot easier. I, I can't travel over to the beach and, and spend the time that they do. So it's great to have, uh, you know, Dave in, in Florida and then also to have Ranty doing what he's doing. And you can just go to his channel and look at all the observations. He talks you through things, uh, helps you understand the world that we live in. So uh, I'm a big fan. And if he thinks he can get something done with a drone, uh, if it'll help him, hey, uh, you know, I'm not willing to give him 1,500 pounds for a drone, but I'm willing to throw in my 10 bucks here. And hopefully if everyone has, um, you know, some five bucks or 10 bucks, I think it'll be well worth it to see uh, what he can do with a drone. And if, if, if history is any indication of what we can expect, just like when he got the P-1000, he obviously has done a lot of observations with that. So I think it's awesome. I don't want to get a drone. Last time I had one, uh, I, I flew it out and it disappeared because I couldn't fly it very well. So I'd rather somebody else be responsible. Yeah, maybe he can attach a gun and kill the queen. Right. You know, yeah, just for free, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah, check out that uh, again. Tinyurl. dot com slash ranty r a n t y drone d r o n e. So there's all kinds of things with the moon landing. We got stuck on the slow motion thing, which I think is important. Uh, the fact that there's never been anyone to return to the moon. Uh, there's not even been a man who's orbited the moon. And if you think that's how technology works, that somebody does something 50 years ago and then <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, it takes 50 years until people can even start talking about having the conversation about doing it again. Think about that. There's no country that has even put a man in orbit of the moon. Yet, 50 years ago, we did it six times. And if you haven't watched uh, Taboo Conspiracy has it, or Taboo Conspiracy 2, his YouTube channel, he has a eight or nine, ten-part series, I don't know how many parts it is, where he reads the entire book of Dave McGowan's Wagging the Moon Doggy. You absolutely have to listen to it. It's a must listen to. And it doesn't have a lot of imagery, so it's okay to listen to in your car or as an MP3 or uh, just when you're out working in the yard or whatever you might do. You can plug that in if you're taking a walk or whatever, put it in your earphones, listen to that. It's such a great uh, job, and he does a great job reading it. So I thought it was really enjoyable. But there's so many things in there that I've long forgotten about the moon landings. Uh, that's the way it works when you do this kind of research. Sometimes you find things that you forget you found. You go back and, Iru, do you ever have that issue where sometimes you you go back and watch yeah. your old? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, completely, completely. I, I have six uh, hundred gigabyte of information, and and I and I uh, I am a, a really you know a organized guy, but uh, sometimes you just lose. Yeah, it's amazing. You, track I, of I, your I own. I just forget. Uh, I, I'll hear myself say something. I'm like, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. That, that's the thing when you do this kind of research, and for people to say you know that there's no proof that we didn't go to the moon. Um, again, it's not up to us to prove that negative. It's up to them to prove uh, their claim. Their claim is that men can go there. And if you just look at technology, uh, there's no way that we did something 50 years ago. And since then, no country has done it. And then when you look at the price tag in today's dollars, uh, I believe that the moon landings cost us $150 billion. So think of what kind of a movie James Cameron comes out with or one of these, um, you know, any of these guys, the, these uh, directors or these movie producers, they come out with, with movies with a $100 million budget or $200 million budget. That is absolutely fantastic. It looks amazing. So imagine what James Cameron could do with $150 billion. That's how much money they robbed from the American people uh, to build up this whole idea, to bring people together, to make them think that uh, by putting our minds together, we can do amazing things. The problem is, is that they made people believe that we can do impossible things. And uh, now the only evidence we have of it is the LRO uh, showing little specks. And like Eero said, some arrows pointing. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I was mistaken. Uh, my bad. Uh, I guess that is Dave McGowan who's reading uh, the book. Are you sure, Dave? I'm not sure about that. I thought it was Taboo Conspiracy. Anyway, it might be Dave McGowan reading Wag the Moon Doggy, or it might be um, Taboo Conspiracy. I thought that was not Dave McGowan reading it, but I could be wrong. Um, 
anyway, definitely check it out. It's on Taboo Conspiracy 2's YouTube channel. It's, uh, it, you know, it, parts one through two, parts three through four. You just have to listen to it. It's pretty long. But, uh, again, I listened to it over the course of a few days. And so many things in there that uh, bring up what was going on in Vietnam at the time and how they needed to take attention away from the uh, battles that we were doing there. And so what a great idea. Uh, and then we really when you look at the footage that we got and what, what I mean is if you watch that documentary we talked about earlier, the Apollo documentary, uh, you'll see that the actual mission itself has no usable data. And, you know, when they land on the moon, they've got a beautiful panoramic scene that they're taking from like the top of the. But where is that footage when it's landing? When it's landing, you get that little triangle piece with just some moon going by. And, and Iru and I have shown many times. Uh, and Iru, maybe you and I should do a good uh, NASA special for the yeah. anniversary. Because we have yeah, so, much, yeah, f- so yeah. much footage and, and the the uh, the moon projector that they have with the track next to it and, and all that nonsense would never be needed if you were really doing a mission. Completely. And and really, it, it will be nice to try to put together and leave a video, you know, like a compilation of the uh, techniques that this guy uses to fake the, the moon landing. Yeah, I totally agree. So on top of that, you've got the uh, no... Neil Armstrong one-on-one interviews, which is just ridiculous. Why would he refuse to do one-on-one interviews uh, unless he was afraid of the questions he'd get? So what are the only interviews he did? NASA-sponsored interviews where he pre-knew the questions that would be asked. And what better way to stay away from anybody asking you about your fraud than that? Um, We talked about Neil being see-through. The lamb that supposedly weighed 30,000 pounds lowers with that massive uh, thrust engine and doesn't make a crater below it. Uh, the fact that nobody was hit by any micrometeoroids, it would be coming in at ridiculous speeds, never slowed down by an atmosphere. F- you know, little specks of dust flying 55,000 miles per hour. It's 55 times as fast as a speeding bullet. They would go right through the moon suit. I don't care what anybody says. Um, so anyway, uh, we, oh, and then on top of that, man, I, I went into detail, and I, I, don't, I won't do it so much here because I did tell him I'd be over there, but uh, if you haven't heard my interview with Gary Corsair, then you need to go listen to that. It's on my YouTube channel. It's called Did NASA Kill Thomas Ronald Barron? Uh, of course yes. it's, of course, it's not <laughs> monetized because you can't say things like that. Of course, it's not uh, advertiser-friendly. Whenever I put anything like that, they take that away. Um, but you know, go over there and, and show some love. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'd certainly appreciate it. It was a great interview, and I found out so much stuff about that that uh, should shock you. It should absolutely shock you. We're talking about Thomas Ronald Barron, who was the whistleblower who said all these problems, found all these problems with NASA after the Apollo 1 fire that killed uh, Grissom, White, and uh, help me out. What's the third name? Why can't I figure it out? Uh, No, no, I'm either. Uh, I can't remember the the name, but it's the same thing that the Russian guys. Right, same thing. They they did the same thing. Right. And this Thomas Ronald Barron, if you haven't heard the interview yet, uh, him, his two daughters, he had two stepdaughters, or one was his real daughter, and his wife in the car, uh, the seven-year-old survived, and now she's speaking out and saying that men dressed in black were in her hospital bedroom uh, after, and she survived without a scratch. She had basically a scratch on her, and the other three people that died in the accident all had crushed skulls, had skull fractures. Uh, It just makes no sense. She woke up and was just fine. Uh, however, everybody else in the car was dragged 300 feet uh, or 300 yards down the track and, and upside down car. And of course, Barron was underneath it. Um, you know, did NASA kill him is the question. Well, he was followed. He was harassed. His trailer was broken into um, all of this done before he even got in the accident. By the way, the car hit the train, not the train hit the car, uh, which is ridiculous. How about this? The train tracks that um, he, well, he crossed those train tracks every day. But the train that was used was owned by NASA. Again, the train that he supposedly hit that killed him was a NASA train that came out of a NASA switchyard. It was used to take things back and forth to Cape Canaveral. Um, Like I said, three people in the car had fractured skulls. Uh, Not only did NASA have that connection with the uh, train, but there were two eyewitnesses to the accident. One refused to ever give a statement. The other person lived in a house that was rented to North American, which is the company that Thomas Ronald Barron actually worked for. That's the only person to ever give an eyewitness account, and they worked for the very company that Thomas Ronald Barron worked for. uh, It just goes on and on. It all came out of Broward County. 
if you've ever heard of Broward County, <laughs> there's so much shit that comes out of there. Uh, there's no record of Broward County of anybody dying that day. And uh, Gary Corsair even went and found the doctor that signed the death certificate. And the doctor said, oh, that is my signature, but I don't remember that accident. Can you imagine a, a guy who just testified to the Senate a week ago, uh, had a 500-page report about NASA that's gone missing. Him, his wife, and his daughter are all killed in a train accident. And the, and the 30 years later, the doctor says, well, that's my signature. I signed that document clearly, but I don't remember that case at all. So ridiculous. Um, on top of that, Thomas Ronald Barron's attorney uh, died the same year as Thomas Ronald Barron due to a fatal heart attack. And then the one reporter who was really big fan of Thomas Ronald Barron saying, oh, this guy's the, you know, one of the greatest whistleblowers of all time. He died the following year when they say it was a it was a suicide and he jumped out of a plane and they say he just didn't pull the cord on his uh, parachute. So he jumped to his own death and they called that a suicide. There was a neighbor of Barron who said that he went through his trailer for 20 to 30 minutes after the night that he died. Uh, there's just so much into that story that is ridiculous. That uh, And again, check that out on my channel. It's called Did NASA Kill Thomas Ronald Barron? Uh, the answer is pretty clear. Gary Corsair has done some of the best work on that case uh, of anybody and has a book coming out called Loneliest Man where he claims that Thomas Ronald Barron is the greatest whistleblower in the history of the world and just talks about NASA's PR machine allows them to keep going, to even take somebody out, to kill them, to brainwash his daughter. Um, it, it's just a crazy story. So there's and that. On top of that, we have Tito. <laughs> on top of that, we have Tito. So definitely check out the uh, Houston We Have a Problem documentary check out uh, Houston we have a problem deleted scenes so you can see uh, what Homeland Security had to say about it um, it's just crazy I mean the greatest feat accomplished by man was actually a Hollywood production and it cost the American taxpayers some 30 billion then 150 billion today uh, you know imagine what George Lucas could do with a budget like that uh, it's just ridiculous it really is sad and again to everybody who doesn't believe that the earth isn't a, a sphere that's fine I don't care. You, you have to take small steps to get to that truth. And one of those steps is realizing that nobody's ever gone to the moon. Once you realize that, you realize no human being has ever taken a photograph of the spherical Earth. Once you realize that, you start asking questions like, well, wait a second. If nobody's ever taken a photo of it, how do we know that it is a sphere? And then once you realize the propaganda behind the actual moon landing, then you start to understand why it is that they've sold you this lie, why they put it in school books, why they teach it to children, why they talk about it at every turn. It's because they need you to believe that men flew up into the sky and landed sideways and stood on a sphere that's in the air. And this helps you believe that you can live on a sphere. And it's all a big hoax. So lots of stuff there. Sorry we didn't get to everything. I've got a huge list here, but we didn't quite get to it all. Iru, any final words before we head out and I go over and check out the experiment going on in Denver? Yeah, uh, we we are making our own experiment. Uh, I comment on that the last show you play oh, yeah. a video that I sent to you. So I'm gonna be uh, maybe in two weeks mm, we can start with that if we reach the um, the money that we need to make all that uh, travel okay. uh, not travel that trip because we are you know like we are like 12 people going like uh, 600 kilometers uh, in uh, to another country and blah. Well, I, I mean, uh, I'm making a like a, you know, tiny spot, video spot to uh, share uh, with the community what uh, with what what is our observation that we, we that we want to achieve. So uh, maybe in one week uh, we can present that the ne in the next Sunday, uh, so the people know how is about it the observation that we want to do. Uh, I'm going to be in Barcelona uh, in one month uh, giving a presentation like I did at the beginning of the year. So the Spanish community is really growing up. Uh, maybe Alex, uh, the music guru, can be again uh, on Barcelona. I don't know. And uh, after that, I'm start to uh, translating a video uh, showing all the media here in Argentina getting crazy with the flat earth topic so maybe in four or five days I finish and I'm going to post it in the English uh, YouTube channel that I have it's called Noor for everyone uh, and maybe we have the time to make that presentation about NASA or, or the electric universe I have a little complicated times with the with my work here because in Argentina 
uh, we are passing, you know, uh, the government change. With, we're going to have election for the president. And here, the economics go really crazy uh, like never before. We are in, the, in, in that kind of history moment that uh, the dollar reached a maximum in the history of our country and things like that. So I need to work a little bit hours to my official work. So anyone that can support me, I have a patron. It's called Nur Para Todos, which is Nur for everyone, but uh, in Spanish. And uh, after that, I keep researching and, uh, you know, trying to upload in uh, research. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So everyone, uh, if you go to uh, patreon.com slash Nur Para Todos. Uh, your Spanish is getting better oh, every day, man. Un poquito, pero no hablo más, you know? <laughs> Um, so here it is, uh, check it out. Uh, he's only got 17 patrons, uh, you know, Ira deserves much more than that. Uh, and while you're oh, over there, thank you. thank you. you're welcome. I'm one of those, by you the know, way. You know, $2 for me, it's a lot. So everyone that can support me, it's really, you know, I, I really appreciate it. Right. And I've always said good things about Patreon because if you go there and you donate, uh, you know, if you send Iru $2 in, uh, PayPal, they'll take out a 39 cent fee. And then they also charge 3%, so he may only get $1.50. Um, but when you do Patreon, you can give to a bunch of different creators, and they only take that uh, fee once. So basically, if you donate $20 to 10 different people, um, you know the fee comes out once. So really, you're donating $19.36 or whatever it is to uh, all those 10 people you know, split up, so $1.93 each. Um, however, if you just donate through PayPal to a few individual people, they're going to take that 39 cents each time. Uh, so everybody would get much less. If you had to do that, you would only donate about $1.50 to each of those 10 people. Uh, so it's much better if you can do Patreon. You can also find me on there, patreon.com slash Jaronism. Uh, I only have like 150 subscri or, uh, patrons, and I deserve a lot more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I would love to have more. No, but um, you know, it's uh, for me. It, you know, I I have a, a computer animation studio, and I always talk with my partner that will be really great to have more time to expand our you know our skills in this profession to make more videos. And I really like to do you know English video and Spanish videos. Of course, for you know for my lack of English, uh, I tend to make more Spanish video. But the thing here is, uh, for me at least, uh, uh, really, we, we have a really bad times uh, in our country. Uh, you know, maybe if you turn off the news and uh, we are not Venezuela, but we are, you know, the, the government here is a Masonic government and they are selling, uh, you know, all the land to England right now. And that is the only thing that you hear in the, in the news and the television. So we have really bad times, but uh, we don't. I, I don't have time to spend even in my Spanish video. Uh, the last year, I, I make like two or three videos each week. Uh, you know, uh, not uh, hang, not live videos. Uh, you know, really post-production videos. And right. right now, I'm making one uh, or two in 20 days, or maybe in a month. So I'm trying to make more live videos because. Uh, I spend less time trying to put all together and there are a really messed video, but at least I can communicate with the people that follow me. But I really, I, I really like to, you know, having some kind of background become from Patreon and, and spend more time doing more research. Yep. So support what you like or it goes away. So, um, you know, that's why I'm, a, I'm one of those 17 supporters you see on the screen of, of Iru. Uh, there's quite a few other channels that I support um, just because I, I want to support them. And if you can help by You are my best supporter in, in the Patreon. I'm the then. number one? Yeah, you're the number one. You are the, yeah, because this, the, 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 those 17 people are come from the Spanish or Argentinian gotcha. uh, country. And, you know, they put $2, $3, things like that. But you give me like, I don't know, like $20, something like that. I think. I, I don't so, remember. So you are one of the most, uh, you are my owner. <laughs> that's why I <laughs> With tell, that you, kind of that's why of I tell money, you how man. many times you can have screen shares. You only get the, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can uh, support me if you want at paypal.me slash Jaron or Patreon. You know what? I totally forgot this is Globebusters. 
<laughs> Never mind. But Bob is not here, Sean, either. I totally so forgot. I was just we take uh, the control of the, was of about the to, Buster channel. I was about to end the show as if it's my own show. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'll get that off the screen. We'll go back to the Globusters thing. Anyway, uh, I could use your support, too. If you don't want to support, that's great. I don't mind. Uh, I appreciate everybody watching videos. If you like the videos you watch, uh, please click like. That's important, too. But with YouTube censoring, delisting, and demonetizing all conspiracy theories, is calling us uh, dangerous and borderline content. Um, you know, even including little snippets of moon hoax uh, in videos, you, it'll direct you to Wikipedia where people can learn the real facts. So, uh, yeah, Apollo <laughs> 11 and other fantasies. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention in a recent Newsweek article, the director general of Roscosmos was quoted as saying. Uh, that he set a new objective so that they can fly to the moon and verify whether they've been there or not. Then he was asked oh. by a reporter if he believed NASA had landed on the moon in 1969, and he didn't answer. He just shrugged his shoulders, and that was the end of the interview. <laughs> so uh, it's very important if people can't understand that. It's very important, and it's healthy to question and think critically about all events, uh, let alone events of this scale. <clears throat> you know what else I have? I have up the wrong – I have the screen for Super Chats for my channel, which is – Cur currently at zero super chats that's because i'm not on there because i had the pre-show and didn't get a super chat so i didn't even look let me pull up the I, I feel bad i didn't see if there's any globuster super chats there might not be any so i might be wrong here but let me pull up the screen oh we did have some let me read these real quick and then we'll go uh michael de la roca said uh thank you guys very much we have uh, patricia flat earth and other hot potatoes hi patricia long time no talk she said just saying hello and thank you for what you do uh thank you as well uh let's see we have XJW Flat Earther, my donation was bigger than Patricia's. All right, a little knock on Patricia. Uh, Joshua Doyle said, check out Hibbler Productions on YouTube. Yeah, he's doing some great documentaries. Uh, definitely check out. It's H-I-B-B-E-L-E-R Productions on YouTube. We have Oasis Denied with a dollar, Oasis Denied with another dollar. Then somebody saying Flat Jord. I don't know what language that is. Flat Jord again. And then we've got Rhino. Hey, Jaron, it's Rhino Factor uh, out here in Monterey, ready to help with any future observations. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, we got to do that soon. So thank you, everybody who uh, helps support uh, Globusters right now. Uh, all that uh, funding for Globusters and Globusters monetization is going to Bob, uh, not me, but he greatly appreciates it. And uh, we all appreciate all the help that we get from everybody. So uh, thank you so much. Um, anything last words, Iru, before I head out? No, don't put me in that compromise, man. I, I, my, my brain is... Sent it's like it's going to explode all right no more <laughs> all right guys uh till next time uh, thanks for joining us we'll see you next week for another globusters till then peace peace